a very good morning to you indeed on uh, day three of the fourth test between India and England in Ahmedabad. And day three is generally moving day when it comes to test match cricket, though given the uh, pace of play and the accelerated nature of it, given the surfaces that we've played on in this series so far, you could be forgiven for thinking that the game has already moved and moved decisively in India's favour. That would be largely because of the brilliance of Rishabh Pant yesterday, whose third test match 100 was a startling display of uh, talent and audaciousness and um, self-restraint at times as well. 101 from 118 deliveries from India's 23-year-old left-handed wicketkeeper batsman. And that has given India a lead of 89 runs. 94 overs, uh, 294 for seven is uh, where India closed last night. Uh, But those numbers perhaps don't give you the full picture. England were quite superb for two sessions and that they certainly uh, lacked um, for nothing in terms of effort and skill in the first two sessions of the day. But with the heat uh, reaching 38 degrees at times out there in Ahmedabad, uh, they sorely lacked that uh, third seamer that might well have helped England push them over the line when they had uh, India 146 for six with the dismissal of uh, Ashwin. Uh, by Jack Leach. England's bowlers were were manful. Uh, Jim James Anderson, three for 40 from 20 overs. Ben Stokes uh, with a Herculean first spell in the morning, two for 73 from 22. Jack Leach was excellent once more. Real control from the left arm spinner, two for 66. Don Best didn't have the the greatest of days, and I'm sure we'll talk about that in the greater length. Steve Harmison is with me, Mark Butcher, this morning. Um, Steve, it was was a day of contrast yesterday. England had things under control for, for two sessions, but after to the tea break India ran away with things yeah good morning Butch good morning everybody at home and it was yeah and uh, England just ran a lot of people say England ran out of steam I think England ran out of England Joe Root ran out of options options the options were um, quite limitless to be fair I think we all argued and you know discussed and throwed ideas around of come to the same conclusion that England were one bowler short and when you throw in what happened with Don Bess and not being able to bowl him with confidence um, you, you'd say that that's why England are on the position and a fantastic unbelievable knock by Rishi Pant but there was there was somebody else in that partnership who who I've been so impressed with he, he's come on with the ball when he's needed to but boy he looked very very good with the bat 113 run partnership England were England like you say had not, that India where they want them to be fair in, in that middle session 140, 146 for 6 when Pant and Sundar came to the, came to the wicket um, and they just took the game away from them you know, naivety youth, enthusiasm but also Pant's ability to take the game away at will when, whenever he needed to sort of just elevate through the gears was was frightening yesterday afternoon and it was brilliant to watch you know even from a even from an England fan to watch the way Rishi Pant performed yesterday you know we get this perception of the young man who is a little bit of a clown jester who's somebody who is life and soul of the party but seems to have this the free spirit and free wheel um, and he showed a different side yesterday because he batted beautifully till he got to about 70, 80 and then just lit the blue touch paper and the shot of Jimmy Anderson 600 test wickets I'm not sure who I'm not sure who was fierce was more you know more shocked you know Jimmy Anderson taking the new ball you know Bishy Pant reverse sweeping yes reverse sweeping the brand new cricket ball off one of the greatest bowlers of all time Jimmy Anderson's face was only a picture, but Joe Root's face at first slip, when he th- he was like, you can imagine him going, that's coming to me. And it's gone straight over his head. I just thought it had everything yesterday. It was a great day of, of international test match cricket. Anderson and Stokes, brilliant up until tea time. England ran out of juice and Pant took advantage. Yep, excellent surface. Perhaps the best one uh, of the series so far. So just to recap where we are with the score. India 294 for 7 in reply to England's 205. Uh, They lead by 89 and Washington Sundar is 60 not out. Here's how they got there. Here is uh, Jack Leach once again. Another appeal. Carbon copy and up goes the finger this time. Pajara has immediately reviewed it. I tell you what, it's hitting halfway up, just over halfway up, middle and off. So there's two titans of the modern era head to head here. Oh yes, beauty from Stokes, he's done it! And Coley playing at it has nicked it through to Ben Folks. 
That's fabulous fast bowling. Terrific wicket. Huge wicket for England. Leach is in and our oh, Rohit. Rohit Sharma. Oh, he went without. Scoring edge. And is taken by Ben Stokes at second slip. And Jimmy Anderson has the third wicket of the session. The fourth of the innings. And India are 80 for four. Anderson, and uh, that's a little wider. And it's a one-handed drive by Richard Punt. And it'll go for four. Rohit Sharma peels off. An imperious uh, drive, just wide of uh, mid-off. Down he comes now and he hits it high and long and for six. He waits for Stokes. Oh, he fired on it with a beautiful in-swinger, he's LBW. That is some delivery. If Waka Yunis at his best had bowled that ball, he'd have been proud of it. Jack Leach is going to bowl, I think that's a good decision. He lobs one up and that's out, caught at mid-wicket. Is there a crowd in there, Mark? Because I can't hear a pin drop. A huge dismissal, that, for Jack Leach in England. Slightly opened his stance to face Leach from around the wicket so he can get to the ball, and then he skips down the pitch to knock it down the ground for a single that takes him to his 50. A huge smile on his face. An excellent, classy innings from uh, Rishabh Pant. Short from Stokes, pulled away by Rishabh Pant through mid-wicket, and he's absolutely crunched that. No, oh, he's a cracker, Jack, this fella. Here is uh, Joe Root and uh, Slog Sweep, and he has, he's picking up the tempo now, is Rishabh Pant, that's four more. Now, a nice little punch down the ground, very good stroke. Wow. Washington Sundar with a dead straight back, it's a dead straight four. Anderson to Pant, who comes down the pitch, slaps him back over his head. Wow, the arrogance of youth. Anderson, oh no, no, <laughs> Rishabh Pant has just reverse paddled him. Incredible shot. <laughs> that is a beauty. What a shot this is. Joe Root is in and uh, Pat, with a slog sweep, has hit it all the way for six. What a way to bring up a third test match hundred. Anderson is in to Pat and he's gone. Anderson has his wicket, a little bit of revenge for uh, England's highest wicket taker but the stage belongs to Rishabh Pant, short from root and punished. And that's four more. India, well, it's, it's as what Gareth Baddy would say, tax-free batting now. Tax-free batting indeed. Uh, India, 89 runs ahead as we uh, go into day three here. And uh, Gareth Batty is uh, with me here this morning. Gaz, tough day for England's bowlers, not least because they were a seam of light. Um, but Don Bess is going to be attracting quite a lot of conversation here today. I noticed that there is a piece from you in the uh, in the Times this morning about England's treatment of both him and Moen Ali uh, on this tour. Um, what do you have? 15 overs, one maiden, none for 56. Not uh, the sort of figures that he would be uh, happy with or his captain would be happy with. But he might have had Rishabh Pant out LBW on 35. That could have changed things uh, quite dramatically for England yesterday. How do you see his game? How do you see him going forward? Um, how do you see the way that he's been treated uh, in this tour overall? Uh, uh, look, uh, I think we'll start with the whole the, the treatment side of it. And, and it's something that's gone on for a period of time. Um, I think even before Don Best came on the scene, we saw Moeen Ali at times getting treated very badly. He was always the first one out of the team. When something wasn't going so well, he was blamed for a lot of things. Or the perception outside was uh, that he was uh, the fall guy, as it were. And then that mantle seems to have been passed on to Don Best to an extent. Uh, we saw a young man probably not expecting to play in Sri Lanka playing. An outcome base, so his stats were very good. Uh, his, the first three games of the winter, I think it was 17 wickets at about 20, 21, something like that. Um, I mean, look, where do we draw the line of, of judging a, a player's performance? We can say, all oh, right, well, we bowled 10 full tosses today. If he's got five for 30, you can bowl 20 full tosses for me. I don't care. It's five for 30. You know, we, we got to, at some point, uh, get a wrangling of how we're going to judge people. Um, and then, obviously, Moen coming into the team after those three test matches. Um, and, obviously, I said at the start of the series, I would pick Moen. 100% because I think he's our best uh, finger spinner batter that we have in the country and I think it's only because of past experiences that maybe he wanted to take a step back for that year that he did um, anyway more players and then uh, the whole saga of uh, of more going home and, and the perception again was that England were disgruntled by it um, and he was uh, sort of left on his own to deal with that 
pressures from the outside sort of media or personnel or supporters, whatever, when everybody else had been afforded um, uh, the ticket and the, and the blessing of going home to family and, and, and refreshing because of the situation we find ourselves with COVID. Obviously, Best then thinks he's back in the mix. Doesn't play on an absolute raging buncer where it's turning the width of the pitch and bouncing over your head. He doesn't get picked. He's sat, sitting there bringing drinks out watching this. Um, I, I mean, that whole instance of, of two games missing there and, and the fallout of it, for any, any human being in any warp of life, that has to have some kind of residual effect in the top two inches of your head. I, d I don't see any other outcome than that. So, uh, obviously, he will say all the right things. And I, I know him personally, I think he's a smashing kid. I'm not saying all this because he's a smashing kid. I just don't think you should treat human beings like he has been treated. Um, and, and by his own admission, he wouldn't have bowled as well as he would have wanted yesterday. You take the wicket of Rishan Pant, you get that rub of the green. To yesterday would have been, I would imagine, a different day for him and for England. Is there, a, is there a way that he can, um, you know, mentally during this test match? I mean, because you know, England's next assignment in terms of test match cricket is going to be back in the UK. It's unlikely that, uh, that, uh, that England will play two... Well, it's almost impossible that England will be playing two spinners back at home again. Um, is there a chance that he can kind of find a way of providing that England get themselves any sort of lead in the test match? Um, you know, put all of that aside and be able to go out there and focus upon the job of trying to win a test match for, for his country or do you think that you know that he's shot do you think that the, the brain has gone and that he's going to need a bit of time away a time bowling for Yorkshire in order to find his form again no I, I actually think uh, he's reliant on other people he's reliant on the, on the rest of his teammates to get some kind of a score but then he's kind of in that position where he can prove a lot of doubters wrong and he could possibly be in a position where he could put England in a position to get over the line or at least put up one heck of a fight. So I, I think he will turn his attention to that and focus on that. Obviously, England need the, the wickets this morning before they, uh, they go about their batting. But as I say, he's relying on a position in the game to afford himself that opportunity. Let's hope he does. And let's hope he, you know, he comes through that the other side. And then the process of, of a little bit of rebuild will happen. He'll have a bit of a pre-season. He'll get some good cricket. There's a good block of four-day cricket when he gets back to England. I think it's about seven on the bounce. Early season championship, perfect. Get some overs in. Get a bit of you time. Get a bit of confidence in your process so that then, as and when England sit around the table for selection again, at least his name is somewhere around the mix and uh, you know he can forge a career moving on for the next... 10, 15 years, whatever it is. Yeah, I know what you're saying, Bats, but then th there's a still a possibility that it could go even worse. And by, by what I mean by that well, is... look on the bright side, don't you? Yeah, I'm sorry, but <laughs> you've got to put both sides of the argument. England get England get a 100-run lead. Joe Root's not going to throw the ball to Don Best because he thinks he's going to bowl three full tosses. There's, there's, there's 12 runs. So that then confidence could... Could, could could trouble them a little bit more. Do you know what I'm saying, Butch? You know, if the England get a England get a small lead, <sighs> trying to go two two, is the England captain going to have the confidence of throwing the ball to him, even though they're a bowler down? There's more. There's more likely that Joe's going to bowl himself. So you know, that's it, it, it's a complicated situation and one I hope Dom comes through. Yeah, it's a it's a point well made. It, it does sort of throw out and the uh, the question also. Of, of a captain wanting to have the, the right resources on the field and Joe Root not having them from the time that he handed the team sheet into the umpires. I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll have another, another word about that uh, come the, uh, the, the final shake-up of this test match and indeed of this series. We're just watching uh, the England team led by Joe Root uh, make their way onto the field here. You can hear a smattering of uh, support in the ground. It was absolutely sweltering in the ground yesterday. Anderson and, and Ben Stokes in particular put in an, uh, a remarkable shift uh, as fast bowlers, the only two fast bowlers that Joe Root had uh, to get through 42 of the 80, I think it was 82 overs England bowled yesterday. They were eight runs, uh, eight overs shy of the 90 over mark. And it was very, very hot indeed. Washington Sundar is uh, out there taking guard. He who has opened the batting for uh, Tanul Nadu in a, a previous life uh, is batting at number eight and looks a very very good number eight indeed in test match cricket uh, he is 60 not out Aksar Patel who is also no mug both left handers 
is uh, 11 not out. And uh, once again, the ball has landed in the hands of James Anderson. 160 tests, 614 wickets, figures of 3 for 40 for him yesterday, including that of uh, Rishabh Pant. Even Jimmy Anderson might have had a, a rueful grin on his face at the end of the day yesterday when he thought back to taking the, uh, the new ball. Pant stepping out and slamming him straight back over his head first ball and then reverse sweeping him over two slips and a gully. Shocking treatment for an old man. 38 years of age. Anderson in. Bang on a line and length. Outside off stump from around the wicket to uh, Washington Sundar who lets it go through to Ben Folks. Huge day in the series this for, uh, for both teams. Of course India uh, are in a position at the moment where they will be meeting New Zealand in the World Test Championship final. We think it's going to be at Lords, although it's not been 100% uh, con confirmed yet in June. Uh, but of course, if England should manage to uh, conjure up a victory here, it'll be Australia that meet New Zealand as Anderson is in again. A little bit of movement back towards the off stump from around the wicket. But again, Sundar lets it pass and there's no run. 89 is the lead for uh, India. 2-9-4 for 7. And... Uh, the two left-handers out there in the middle will be looking to make England toil still further. Joe Root is hoping that is not the case. Anderson with the, the wristbands on both arms. Black ankle bracelet on his uh, left foot. Again, finds a length, but it's uh, wide of off stump and Washington lets it go by. Question for you, Steve. I mean, this is incredibly difficult. Your first over coming back in after such a, a long and hard day yesterday. What is the key to Anderson? He never seems to leak any runs. Is it his line or is it his length that is the that is the key to his success? I actually think it's both, to be fair. But I think it's both line and length. He's at, at the pace he's at. He ha his, line, his line has to be good, but also his length has to be good. If he's shorter than the length he's bowling, you know, the, the sh with him not bowling... That is shorter intentional from Anderson try to extract a little bit of bounce we saw that at times yesterday more from Ben Stokes where the ball banged in <coughs> midway down this uh, track at the Narendra at Modi Stadium did leap a little bit at uh, Indian batsman that accounted for Virat Kohli he made his second duck of the uh, of the series averaging 28 the Indian captain who's been very vocal in support of the pitches that we've played on in this series so far and not so uh, supportive of the techniques of batsmen on both sides but he has uh, struggled himself as well as Anderson is again wide of off stump and that goes through to Ben Folks. I think with Jimmy, Jimmy likes to play with batsmen and move them across the crease. Um, his lines, his lengths are, are very, very good, but he, he's waiting for that killer ball and I think he's a brilliant example to any young bowler. And Jimmy's had to learn this. You, know, when he, you were the bare bats when he first came on the scene. Jimmy had an in-swinger, he had an away swing, he had a bouncer, he had a slower ball, he could bowl a Yorker, not a problem. The problem for Jimmy is he bowled them all in one over. And you know, as he's getting older... Beautiful. What a delivery. Manages to get the ball to pitch just outside off stump and leave Washington Sundar. And that is the end of, uh, of another maiden for James Anderson, his 12th in 21 overs. And uh, India remain 89 runs ahead. And the reason why he's the great bowler he is is because he, he, he has got impeccable lines and lengths. And he can move a batsman. If he feels his other batsman is a, a head's fallen over or he's somebody who nicks it to slip, Jimmy will work back 10 balls and get the batsman in a position to then go for the kill. And I think that's what he's been good at for the last 10 years of his career. So he'll be looking at lines and lengths of outside of stump, bringing Washington Sundar across. And if there is any sort of lateral movement, he will just try and nip it back into his, pa uh, his pads from around the wicket to try and get Washington Sundar LB. If not, he'll be trying to go that little bit wider and say to him, right, I'm going to bowl here all day. Or you, have you got it in you to sort of push at one? Then he brings slip into play. Well, he's been the subject of much discussion this morning. Uh, an excellent summary of, uh, of where he's at in his career from Gareth Batty just before the first ball was bowled. But it's going to be Don Best bowling to the two left-handers. Slip, short leg. 
nice bit of flight, really nice delivery to start with for Don Best. That'll give him plenty of confidence. And he's also been given uh, the confidence of his captain to open up proceedings this morning. I do think Joe Root is magnificent at how he looks after his spinners when he's out there. You know, giving Don Best the ball now. Two left-handers, yes, everything marries up. But there would be a nagging doubt, should I, shouldn't I? He's chucked in the ball. I think that's, I think that's brilliant from Root. Slight inside edge onto Pad from that Guys. first delivery. Oh, chance! Just wide of Don Bess, who had to dive to his right. Axar Patel on the back foot has driven the ball uppishly. And it just evaded the groping hand of uh, Don Bess as he dived to his right and has ended up going for four. Oh, that's a strong shot early on in the piece from Axar Patel. It's in the air right up until the point of passing the pop increase at the non-striker's end. Bessin again finds some nice drop, finds a really good length. And uh, Axar defends out onto the offside and there's no run. Plenty of support also from the England fielders as though everybody is aware of the situation Brilliant, inside Don Bess's head. I'm trying to give him as much confidence as they possibly can as he's in a couple of steps nice, and Bessie, sharp spin nice, out of the rough well taken by Ben Folks. But it's just something I've noticed in the last Ball four balls. Back. Has Don Bess shortened his run up a little bit? He seems to be bowling from a lot closer to the stumps. He doesn't seem to be walking as quite as far or running quite as far. Keep an eye on that. Ball uh, going on with the arm. And again, Axar on the back foot has chopped that one out uh, to the man on the point boundary, Dom Sibley, who gets an early touch. Big day for Dom Sibley as well when uh, eventually England get the chance to bat. Noticed anything yet? Bat's a bit early to say, I guess, but it certainly, certainly seems to be a little bit shorter in his approach. I feel like it's more how the camera is then panned on to him through his run-up I think he's already had a couple of steps but when when we see the shot would be my original would, it's my first instinct I think you might be right we've just got a long shot there and he has doesn't look as though he's changed anything but it's a good over no full tosses bit of sharp turn half a chance and uh, Don Best starts starts well 299 for seven yeah, the one thing I would say, Steve, with his, with his approach to the crease, call it a run-up, call it whatever you want, he seems to be going and, and walking. He's got sort of a walk before he has a little skip and then a more positive walk. He never really gets to a trot or a run, but he looks now, for me, as though he's going in a straight line. At times, he does have a bit of an arc. So he starts uh, on the right foot, but then arcs in off his left and pushes himself wide uh, out onto the, uh, the return crease at the, the far right-hand side to a left-hander. So he pushes himself away from target is basically what I'm trying to say. It looks now like he's going in a straighter line so that everything can go straighter to target so there's less variables. Anderson in. And he has Akshar Patel in his sights this time. Again, Akshar on the front foot. Let's this one pass through to Ben Folks. And, uh, well, they've got the look of, uh, of a team that are at the back end of a tour of the subcontinent. There are a lot of brown-looking faces. The, uh, the lines around squinting eyes are seemingly etched a little bit deeper. Long days in the field. Tough times uh, in the interim between test matches. Working hard at their game as uh, Anderson gets that one to rise again. It comes off the outside half of the bat and ends up in the hands of Gully. And there's no run. But uh, there was some performance by England yesterday. The only reason that Rishabh Pant was able to, uh, to take, uh, in using the words of, of Mike Atherton in the Times today, taking India from walking a tightrope to, to bossing a game was basically fatigue. It was basically the fact that Joe Root only had the three bowlers that he could trust to, to, to throw the ball to. Two of them were seamers and both of them had shot their bolt in the middle session. As uh, Anderson gets a little bit of reverse swing away from uh, Axart, but it starts off too wide and he grimaces as he turns to go back to his mark. Perhaps the foothold is causing him one or two problems. There's an interesting thing. Watching the, the first uh, 
It was the first day, wasn't it? The, the first test match in uh, Madhabad. And that hole, that crater that, uh, that was created after just one day, well, three quarters of a day's bowling, that hasn't happened here in this test match. No, but I think well, because of that, I think when you looked at the pitch just before the, the test match started. Zanderson is in once more. Short ball and uh, Axel lets it pass. When you when you looked at it just before the game started, there was a, a shaven area around the um, around the crease, around the front line popping crease, and then it, it seemed as though it had already been filled in from the point of view that, like you have in, in England, you have like a little bit of sand, a little bit of a little bit of loam, and it's it hardened to fill after day one, after day two, after day three. This seems has been an effort from the start to sort of dig that little bit out, fill it in. So they're not going to have the problems like they did the first innings in uh, Ahmedabad in the first test. Wide of off stump again. And uh, Ben Folk's getting plenty of, uh, plenty of practice. Plenty of work in those uh, butter-like hands behind the stumps. Looking at some of the numbers for James Anderson. Since 2016 against left-handers, he averages 19.9. Against right-handers, 21.3. <laughs> it's like he's bowling off spin nowadays. Is he? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him I said that. No. Anderson in and uh, attacks the stumps this time, but it uh, continues on its line down the leg stump. It's half an appeal and uh, nothing doing. Another maiden for James Anderson. 299 for seven. Lead is 94. And I think that's what we're talking about, Bats. For that ball is ex the ex prime example of where Jimmy's at. He He's gone wide outside off stump to Axar Patel. <laughs> Drivable length, but just a touch wide on the length. So he knows his control of lines and lengths is beautiful. And he's wanting to bring Axar across. And he's seen that he hasn't quite got him across there. So he's gone to the bouncer. Gone to the bouncer to sort of just... just a he wants him on off stump. He wants Axar's feet to go on to off stump. And then he's gone for the kill with that last ball. And it's just actually done a little bit too much. And he's gone for, he's gone for LBW. So that's just what Anderson's done. And, you know... Them, them stats tell you everything. 19 and 21, left and right handers since 2016, for a man who's 39, well, nearly 39 year old, is ridiculous. Yeah, since his 33rd birthday, quite remarkable. You are listening to commentary of the fourth test between India and England on Talksport two with the Times and the Sunday Times cricket team. Writing with an edge. Just looking at the, the breakdown of the the run rate from yesterday. As Bess is in flighted and uh, Washington Sundar says thank you very much and he has banged it straight back over Don Bess's head for six this is a, a fine young all-rounder another one for India as they go past 300 and the lead reaches exactly 100 yeah this is a common trend uh, against the Indian players if you go up out of the hand and you get it full they are very 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 confident to hit you downtown they don't need to run down the wicket to do it. They'll stand from the crease. A great skill. Step into the ball and get it up and over. Mid-off, a full flourish of the bat. Wonderful strike from Sunder. This fella is not a test match number eight. He's a proper player, this lad, isn't he? He appears to be. Again, it's uh, flighted from best. Oh, that's a great piece of timing. Oh, Washington Sundar has just threaded the ball between two fielders on the offside extra cover and a slightly deeper set extra cover yes it was a full toss the ball was dipping on it and he's somehow managed to thread the needle between those two fielders and get it fast enough quick enough to evade the man who's back on the fence at long off for four ten runs in two balls Sundar goes into the 70s it's the control of that bottom hand it's beautiful slightly shorter this time Sundar's on the back foot chops it into the ground off the bottom edge and it is fielded by uh, the man at the deeper set extra cover lead is 104 309 for 7 now partnership is 50 from just 80 deliveries between the two left-handers Aksar and Sundar over spin from best this time and, uh, Washi, rather unimaginatively uh, nicknamed Washington Sunday, really ought to be George. <laughs> and it's a pass to uh, Ben Folks. 
Bess in again, bringing his uh, right hand over the ball. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Switches and uh, fires the ball in a little flatter, gets some turn, and Sundar's on the back foot defending. Yeah, just on purpose there, dropped his, his bowling arm, dropped it at, I don't know, maybe 20 degrees, so he came around himself a little bit more, driving it into the stumps of Sundar. Bessie once more. Oi. It's over the top, oh! Dropped. Or was it a bump ball? Joe Root diving to his left on the drive at uh, extra cover. I don't know, I wonder if that was it. Steve Armstrong is saying bump ball. Yeah, just, I think he just drove it into the ground. Joe got a hand, palmed it up and, and took it. Just going on from what you were saying before, Bats, uh, about the lines and the way Don Bess is attacking it. That first ball that he hit for six, you can see he's trying to throw it above the eye line because you know, England are in a position where they're looking to sort of potentially buy a wicket. Men up, hoping for a miss hit. That, the length that he, he's right underneath his eye line, has he got to get that a touch wider? If he's going to throw it up, has it got to go a little bit wider, which brings, you know, obviously slip into play? Yeah, I think it was an involuntary going up as much as it, it did out of his hand. He's, generally, you get the shorter guys where you have to go up a little bit out of the hand to get it full, but that one went up uh, you know an extra inch which then it has to be wider to draw the mistake from the batter Anderson in two slips in the gully and the uh, gully dives to his right to take that outside edge from Akshar Anderson has now bowled 13 deliveries without conceding a run this morning and uh, he seems to have Akshar Patel moving across the crease towards his off stump and how long it will be before we see the attempted in swinger from uh, Anderson to the left-hander. I suppose the theory from Anderson and Bess is almost the same. Bess should be trying to yep. hold him out off stump by bowing it in a little bit of rough, clipping every now and again so it spins, and then just work him across the crease back to try and hit him on the pad or bowling. Anderson does go for the stumps. There it was. But uh, Axar equal to it. Nice little punched on drive, which is fielded by Johnny Bairstow at uh, mid-on. Uh, Akshar will scamper through for a single, 310 for seven, and I think, 105. Sorry, Butch, I think what, what, you, what you're saying there is, Bats, you talk, you're looking at two guys who one's got supreme confidence, no, well, where he wants to land it, and another guy who's a young man who is just battling a little bit, finding the line, finding the length, and battling against himself more than, more than anything else other than the batsman. That's interesting. Gareth that you mentioned the, the, the dropping of the arm for that delivery that was something that, that I felt that he did really well in Sri Lanka actually he tends to bowl with a very straight very high arm as Anderson is in once more short ball it's a good one and to Washington Sundar <laughs> who actually for the first time looks like a test match number 8 or even 9 or 10 in uh, evading that bouncer but uh, no harm is done and my, my feeling was watching him in Sri Lanka he was very successful there took wickets and uh, certainly wasn't bowling the number of full tosses that we've seen since he's been in India but that the arm was always so very high that he was getting that, that the reverse drift drifting the ball into the right hand and then turning it further down the leg side and that seemed to me to, to be affecting his control the fact that the ball is having to go sort of more up out of the hand Whereas when he dropped his arm, second innings, I think, in the second test match, he dropped his arm a little, just consistently, tried to get a little bit more body, a little bit more chest into the action, and his control improved quite remarkably. As uh, Anderson is in once more, around the wicket again, and oh, that's struck Washington Sundar, a nasty blow, turned him, turned him round, got him to, uh, to have both his feet pointing up the pitch, uh, squared him up, Get might well have hit him somewhere unmentionable and he's called for the physio straight away at least he can call for him I guess yeah it's one of them ones I always laugh when they say we're for the physio and you think well what is the physio going to do here really <laughs> really other than, other than stand there and giggle with you yeah I think so we don't describe too much about what's going on we'll maybe just uh, go on to that point you were saying Butch about Don Best dropping his arm and what that actually does from a technical point of view fundamentally if you drop your arm and come around yourself a bit more you get more square seams so for anybody listening if you put your palm of your hand up to a window and then just sort of turned it to the right the seam will be wax going on, wax on wax, wax on off. wax off karate kid here we karate go kid, yeah. get up on one knee in your front room <laughs> it's only four in the morning go for it um, 
and, and you're going to get a square seam. What that actually does to the ball, it makes it direct and it's got like that sort of um, spiral tunnel effect. Rifling. Yes, yeah, yes. Gotcha. And it goes direct into the area. Now, Don Bess's natural ball and from his natural height that he balls from sometimes is a bit past the perpendicular. He sets the seam up a more sort of canter towards leg slip to a right-hander. So there'd be, there's more generation of overspin there, hence the drop and hence the full tosses if you get your release point wrong. Um, and, and that is kind of where he got more control in Sri Lanka, maybe, because he was direct on pitches that offer, you don't need to be as precise. Now, because, again, watch that whole series for live. And I, I, I spoke with Gene Patel about this in the... In the before one of the day's play we actually were able to get within two meters of the players in Sri Lanka they weren't quite so hot on the as Anderson is in again and that's flipped off the hip by Washington Sundar there is a man back uh, deep backward square leg that's Dom Sibley and in Sri Lanka it appeared to me that Dom Best in terms of his of his, of his head space was able to kind of you know whilst in the middle of a spell whilst in the middle of the game was, was able to kind of work out what he was doing and, and how he was trying to go about things which spoke of a mind that was clearer. At the moment, it's kind of like, I just want to get the ball in my hand, I want to let, get, let it go and get it to the other end. There's no, you know, he doesn't have the time or the, or the mental capacity to kind of work out what's happening and why it's happening. And that speaks of what you're talking about in terms of the way his mind is, uh, is a little bit fried right now. Two slips go down in weight to uh, as Anderson. Gets the ball back in at uh, Aksar, who again plays with a beautifully straight bat, side on position, and manages to knock it out 15 yards in front of uh, square leg. And he will keep the strike. He's 18 from uh, 48. Washington Sundar is 71 from 133. The lead is 107. India 312 for 7. England are toiling. Neil Manthorpe uh, is a man who makes everything seem easy. There's never any toil from Manners. Good morning to you, sir. No, I don't know about the third day of a test match and <laughs> getting up at the old quarter to three alarm clock. Anyway, it's, uh, thank you very much, Butch. 312 for seven, India. And uh, my goodness, the uh, game does seem to be out of England's reach at the moment. Having said that, the pitch is not deteriorating nearly as much as we would expect normally on uh, a pitch in the, the subcontinent in India certainly right um, Dan Lawrence is doing his usual work on the ball he's got his shirt untucked and uh, he's beavering away polishing one side of the ball trying to get some uh, reverse happening in India and they resumed this morning had a lead of uh, 89 294 for 7 so they've taken that uh, lead up above 100 107 now we haven't heard from uh, our analyst Jared Kimber this morning I um, I wanted to get Jared's take on uh, Rishabh Pant now that he's had a night to uh, to bed down and reflect on his century yesterday. I, I remember several times, once in particular in my career, Jared, watching uh, and commentating on Adam Gilchrist. And I remember I can hear myself saying, will we ever see the like of him again? Morning. Oh, is your microphone not working? Unfortunately, we've got a, one of the best sound technicians in the business. I just walked into the commentary studio. He'll be able to sort that out for you Matt Gubbins nothing he doesn't know about sound here's Jack Leach into the attack and uh, taking over from Jimmy Anderson that one is pushed up towards Don Sibley at uh, extra cover and uh, there's no run is the game beyond England Gareth Batty can they is there a, is there a clawbackable route yeah I think so but, but obviously they need the three wickets sooner rather than later Jack Leach and down the wicket comes Akshar Patel and he's cleared mid on for a one bounce four used his feet beautifully he's not the worst number nine Akshar Patel and that's four more cool. this is well ball from Jack Leach he just 
He's got it up above the island, but he's pulled it back. He's dropped the length. He's made the ball dip on Axar Patel. And he's been smart in a lot of ways. He's got his mid on sort of halfway, almost three quarters back. And Axar Patel hits it almost straight at him. He gets enough left hand as he swipes the ball just to get it up and over and evade that fielder. It's only a matter of feet, just two or three feet over his head. He almost whacked it straight at him. Well, the result is four more. Akshar moves on to 22 and India 316 for seven. The lead is now 111 as Leach is in once more. It's a slightly quicker one. It's turned off his pads to short leg, to leg, leg slip actually, fielded by Joe Root. Akshar remains on 22. Washington Sunder is on 71. Washington Sunder came into the... Uh, the wider public's uh, view for the first time in the IPL. That one is turned away down the leg side. Fielded by Root once again at leg slip. I think, man, as you answer your question, I think it, it comes down to how well England starts. And England's top three. If you give India any sort of sniff, they just roll straight through you. But if England can nullify the top, oh, top the start at the top, they've, they've got a chance of putting a partnership on this, uh, this surface. Down the leg side here from Leach and a pull shot and a miss from Axar Patel. There's not, there's not too many demons, is there, in it, Bats? It's not spinning sharply. It's not really zipping around. It's not really swung that much for, for Anderson or Stokes. Whatever the, you know, it's, they've hit the pitch hard and it's done a little bit, but it's been relative, still relatively decent for batting. All right, it's as good a third day, third morning pitch as you can hope for in India, I reckon. Off the back foot now, Leach is punched away by Akshar Patel. Now he's given himself some room, that is a quality shot, there's nothing wrong with the ball that I could see. Slightly short, very slightly short, but it's straight and Akshar Patel has exposed all three stumps back to the leg side and punched it off the back foot for four. Yeah, not too much wrong from Jack Leach, as you say man, it's just a fraction, fraction short, but this is all about the precision of foot movement from Akshar Patel. He's almost strictly come dancing, he gets his feet out of the way so he can access the ball and go a little bit into out off the back foot. So starts to punch it at extra cover and as his feet move away to the leg side he opens up to be able to open the face and get it through that cover region. This is sweet batting, really is, this high skill. And there's one thing that we know about Indian batsmen, they're not afraid of playing spin, they're not afraid of a spinning ball which, going back to Harmi's point, is going to be England's uh, challenge. Can they trust their defence when they, when they do get the chance to bat? Especially when they're 320 for seven and leading by 115, then they're particularly unfearful of uh, the spinning ball. Now it's uh, Jimmy Anderson to continue, and that's banged in short and up onto his toes goes uh, Washington Sunder, knocks it away out in the onside, and uh, there's no run. I was mentioning about Washington Sunder coming to the wider public's attention in the IPL when. He was seen to be a fairly modest off-spinner um, who uh, really didn't look very special. And it's so funny it's how many cricketers are forced to change career direction because he isn't really an off-spinner. He's a top-order batsman. Jared, Jared Kimber, your microphone working now. I, I am on. I actually was part of the reason he went to RCB. Here's Anderson again. Short ball once more and it's pulled away by... Sundar down towards deep backward square for a single 321 for seven. I was consulting with them in whatever draft that was, 2018 or 2019, and they gave me an option of three players. And I said, look, if you pick this kid, you've got a 10-year player, if you look after him correctly. He could probably be a pitch hit, pinch hitter at the top, and he'll be able to bowl three or four overs before the first 10 overs of the game. And I'm not saying there aren't better players available than him perhaps right now, uh, but I, I think, you know, having seen him very early on, he just looked a different class to a lot of the other younger Indian players. As a batsman? As a both. I mean, he's a really good o opening bowler with the new ball. He's not as good in test cricket. Anderson in once again. Third short ball in a row, and this one is evaded by Aksar Patel, and it goes through to Ben Folks. 3.21 for seven. Because he's tall and he's accurate as an off spinner, he, uh, he has the ability to skid the ball through a little bit, and also you can't really get back or forward to him as much as you, uh, you can to uh, a shorter off spinner. So he can skid the ball through, and he can also then drop it a little bit when he needs to, um, and, and he can spin it. He's not a massive spinner of the ball. But he's also, you could tell from when, I think when he first started, he was about 17 or 18 in the IPL. He just wasn't overawed, and he looks like, to me, one of those cricketers. 
Anderson again this time he does pitch it up and it's played defensively by Akshar and uh, there's no run he looks like to me one of those cricketers who as a professional was just going to continue to add little things to his game whether it be fielding or you know perhaps captaincy as he gets older or whatever it was and he was a natural ball striker and he already had a good role so my thing was the worst case scenario you have someone who can bowl two or three overs in the power play every time best case scenario you have a 10-year player who can also bat anywhere in the top five made his mark uh, in this test match that drive and a miss here from Akshar Patel it's Jimmy Anderson's gone short 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 then pitched it up and then gone really full inviting the drive and he could have had his man very easily as Akshar Patel drives and misses I can see why RCB went for him I'm going to ring Stewie as soon as I've finished on this stint <laughs> his best player I've ever heard of this player is a brilliant player I, I just think when, you, when you're looking at those sorts of players if you've got a guy who, at worst, is going to be a role player for you for a very long time, you can take the punt on, on the other player who's doing better at the moment. And I can't remember who the other two players were, but they were about 26, 27. And I was like, they might have a better year. They won't have a big, long uh, career. Anderson then finishes with another bouncer at the end of uh, the 101st over of the innings. India 3-21 for seven. Axel Patel 26, Washington Sunder 72. No breakthrough for England so far this morning. And just to go on a little bit from what Jared said there, the challenge for India would be, you know, young man, Washington Sundar, you've got Axar Patel coming, you've got Ravi Jadeja, you've got Ravi Ashwin, you know, the way he's bowled, batted and bowled in that in this, this test match. How do you fit four players into probably a two two spots? Because India have got to come, the, the next time India play test cricket, they've got to come to England. They're not going to play three spinners. They're going to have to have an extra seamer. So it's where you fit this in. So it goes back to the point that you're trying to make, Jared, is you have that 10-year plan or have that you know, thought of what's going to happen in the future and potentially saying, right, this is my man for the next five or six years. How do you fit him in when you've got Axar Patel, who's got the best bowling average in the world you know, of all time at this moment in time and you've got Ravi Ashwin and Ravi, uh, Ravi Jadeja but it's this rumbling debate isn't it that's going around cricket at the, at the minute young players are multi f multi-functional players they're not just going to go for one skill they're all trying to do two and they probably should be doing three um, and then you've got your fitness to, to knock on the top so you know we, we've had it with wicket keepers most wicket keepers can bat now if they're your best batters pick them as a batter it doesn't matter that they don't take the gloves and everybody goes well you've got three wicket keepers in your side it's nonsense he's the best batter so he plays and it could be the same problem that they're having but with spinners I mean also what they're doing is if Ashwin's back continues to degrade at the rate that it is they give, they're having a warm up aren't they they're literally giving him work experience on the job and and you know eventually he'll be their, their front line off spinner um, you know in two, three, maybe four years time Jack Leach continues he's England's number one spinner and that's played defensively by Washington Sundar can I just talk about Don Bess's uh, bowling this morning uh, so he bowled two overs and I thought he bowled uh, about three or four really dangerous balls but he also over pitched three times and bowled uh, three short balls so in 12 balls six of them were not ideal and that's why he's out of the attack Leach in once again and uh, played defensively by Washington Sundar up towards extra cover that's not a good strike rate is it 50% morning Darren Goff. good morning everyone I think it was just show a faith from Joe Root I think after all the criticism he's taken overnight it's put Don Bess on if it works it works if it don't take him off bring Jack Leach back on here is Leach again nice forward Leach comes Leach. Sundar pushing it up towards mid on and uh, they long on and they go through for a very easy single I tell you what Washington Sundar he's just been uh, written up as uh, well the budding best all-rounder in the world by Jared Kimber but he's got his eyes on a hundred here Washington Sundar, I, I, you can just see the man at his focus, he's absolutely not going to give it away. No! Big appeal for leg before wicket as Akshar Patel is struck, I think impact outside the line of off stump. Not talking from experience manners, but when you get the 73 and you got the tail enders at the other end, it's that horrible time isn't it, because you're still a bit away there, 27 runs. Um, on one of these wickets where it can go bang bang uh, but he'll, he'll definitely have it in his mind three figures oh, no doubt Akshar Patel 26 he's on strike at the moment and he's driven beautifully out towards uh, mid wicket straight to Ali Pope 322 for 7 lead of 116 
116. Well, that's our Patel will be thinking 50 as well. So he goes the other way. The man at the other end will be thinking, I've got a 50 here. Here's Leach again and uh, nudged away out towards mid wicket again. Ollie Pope fields no run. 3.22 for seven. And, and if they both get to those milestones, it is game over for England. Let, let, let's be honest about it. So if one gets to 100 and one gets a 50, we're in real trouble. Because realistically, the way the pitch is and the way they've bowled India throughout this series, um, <laughs> what, what's the lead? 118? 116. Though. 116, it's probably what, like equivalent to about 150, 160 now, as we, as we stand. The pitch conditions and the way it's played. It's going to be very difficult from England. Very, very difficult from here. We ought to get Jared Kimber to talk about uh, to Rishabh Pant. Um, I, I mentioned earlier when his microphone wasn't working that uh, I distinctly remember the words coming out of my mouth many years ago when uh, Adam Gilchrist scored a, a breathtaking 100 and, I, and I, I actually said, will we ever see the likes of him again? I was, uh, uh, hey, uh, <laughs> there was a lovely, it was a brilliant tweet actually sent yesterday. If it was ever a, a two-word tweet, literally two words that summed it up. It was uh, sent out by a colleague of ours in the Melbourne age, Greg Bourne, one of the great cricket writers, sports writers actually, and it's turned away this time as Jimmy Anderson continues off his pads by Washington Sunday for a leg, uh, a leg by. But Greg, Greg Bourne sent a tweet, just said, pant gasp <laughs> it was very clever um, what have you got for us on Richard Pant Jared? well I think one of the most interesting things is we forget how late Adam Gilchrist started um, as a professional cricketer he was 25 26 by the time um, he actually uh, made by the it. time Ian Healy finally moved on <laughs> well yeah do you remember and he played as a batsman for he played as a batsman for New South Wales couldn't get into the New South Wales team as a keeper because they had Phil Emery which now looks like one of the most bizarre decisions any <laughs> professional cricket team's ever made Anderson and again Played away defensively by Aksar Patel. 3.23 for seven. And if you remember, and, and you were probably there, Manners, uh, Australia were playing in South Africa, and Gilchrist was there as the backup wicketkeeper, and he ended up playing the limited overs as a specialist batsman. He was fielding in slip uh, and dropped everything, if I remember correctly. He was the worst slip fielder <laughs> I've ever seen. Um, and so, again, he had to prove himself. So he played for New South Wales as a batsman, uh, got recruited by um, Western Australia, who had Ryan Campbell at the time. So he had to fight with Ryan Campbell for that spot, who was a very good player himself, uh, and then ended up having to get in as a batsman a second time. Oh, Anderson beats Akshad Patel's off drive with a beauty, and that's uh, just nipped away. Still a little bit of seam movement, remarkable. And the ball is now in its uh, 23rd over. Of its se well, it's the second new ball. An absolute beauty from Jimmy Anderson. So by the time Gilchrist got into the Australian team as a specialist wicketkeeper, he basically had to overcome a bunch of different people, was a professional, knew his game really well, had played a little bit in England, uh, he played club cricket, I think in Richmond, wasn't it, um, as well. You know, he, he was a quite a well-rounded person, and he knew exactly who he was. Richard Pant is not the same. Right up uh, into the block hole here from Jimmy Anderson. Played away defensively, no run. Because Rishabh Pant started very early for India. Played, you know, Ravi Shastri and Virat Kohli have both been very harsh on him when he's played these kind of... Sh the exact shot he played of Jimmy Anderson yesterday yeah. are the sort of shots that they've had to go at him for uh, many times, publicly and privately. Uh, he went back to the IPL this year and couldn't hit the ball off the square because so many people told him to play sensibly. He didn't actually know how to bat anymore. It's a really, really interesting... It's a completely different situation to what Gilchrist had to go into. But the difference is, because we've seen Gilchrist, everyone went, if we just persist with him, he's eventually going to explode like this. Anderson in another short ball and Aksar Patel ducks underneath it. Through it goes to uh, Ben Fox. Uh, but it, but the, the, the one thing that Gilchrist did have to go up against was uh, that... Australia had a legendary wicketkeeper. He was literally... I mean, he got booed in his first test and Gilchrist for taking over uh, Ian Healy's job, which is an incredible thing again. Well, he was pretty good, though, Ian Healy. That's what I mean. <laughs> Whereas in, in Rishabh Pant's uh, situation, you've got Ridiman Saho, who's a very, very good player, but he's not an all-time legend like Ian Healy. Um, and so they've been able to sort of bring him in a little bit more soft, bring him in for a couple of tests, take him out for a couple of tests, which is uh, maybe an easier beginning. Anderson in once again completes the over with uh, another full-length delivery, which actually... Akshar Patel plays defensively out on the onside. I have to say that Rishabh Pant's coming for some serious criticism in his very, very short career. I mean, uh, uh, there were, you know, I've seen him 
described as hot-headed and you know verging on a, being a maniac with the bat and playing outrageous shots but it just shows I mean you know he he was given out on 35 yesterday such a is the fine line between success and failure well he made his comeback in, in this era so you know it's only what five six tests back uh, in Melbourne played one bad shot and everyone called for him to be dropped again imagine if they dropped him before Melbourne considering what he did in Australia and now what he's done against England and the, and the good thing is for him is but Dawn is out of the way now uh, because that was a big thing as well wasn't it when you talk about replacing Gilchrist replacing Ely I mean Dawn has been an absolute legend for Indian cricket and he was the one that was pushing as well whether it be a batsman or whether it be a keeper in that position. Yeah, I, I think in, in one-day cricket, that was certainly a complication. But it, it, it's very interesting. When, when you talk about the history of wicket-keeping um, and you look at the fact that they bat so much better now. Jack Leach continues. Down the wicket comes Washington Sunday. Used his feet nicely. Drove it all the way down to long on where Don Best does the fielding and there's no run. Uh, they go for one run, sorry. Uh, we look at Gilchrist as the one who changed it, but you can actually see before and after Gilchrist, it was already on the way up. And you see Alex Stewart playing uh, as, as about, even Jeffrey Dujon was picked because of his batting. There were certainly better wicket keepers around. So it had been for a long time that batting had been prioritised. It's just that uh, Gilchrist did it in such an exciting and dynamic way. Jack Leach in again, down the wicket comes Aksha Patel this time and has launched Leach straight over long on and over the rope for six. Used his feet beautifully. The left arm spinner and left-handed batsman Aksha Patel, step and a half, got to the pitch of it, got the elevation and has six runs and India are 330 for seven. Well, we saw the ball before Washington Sunday. I was so disappointed. He didn't quite get to the pitch and dragged it to the wide mid on for one. But Axar Patel there, the tail ender, just basically showed him how to do it. Got to the pitch. Nice strike. Straight down the ground for the maximum. Well, Jack Leach up to the crease once again. And uh, this time it's played away defensively to short leg. And there's no run. You're listening to commentary of the fourth test match between India and England here on TalkSport 2 with the Times and the Sunday Times cricket team writing with an edge and we are grateful for the uh, collaboration and the partnership with uh, the Times and that one is driven down the ground for another single to uh, long on where Don Best does the fielding. They're making it look rather easy here in India which is a bit of a concern for well, England. Concern and also some comfort perhaps because the pitch really is quite benign. I think it's tired. I think you're a tired England bowling attack. Yeah. I thought you were saying the pitch was tired, but it looks quite fresh. That's time it's steered away behind square on the offside to Jimmy Anderson at deep cover. Another single. It's batting, I must say, is looking absolutely straightforward. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've got two players who are looking the part, aren't they? Making it look rather easy. Jimmy Anderson looked threatening with the line. What are you always going to be with the lines? He plays so disciplined. Testing the technique of the batsman when the first come to the crease. But it's been comfortable against spin so far for him. Very comfortable. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, last ball of the over from Leach is defended quite easily by Axar Patel, who remains on 33. Washington Sunder 75, 332 for seven. And it's good morning for the first time this morning to Mark Nicholas. Good morning. Manners, good morning. Everybody, Hami's off. He's out of here. He's going to go make some tea, as I've just done. So I missed the wicketkeeper conversation, which is one that I enjoy as I've followed the path of wicket keepers since one of my first heroes was Jim Parks who was chosen in the 60s more as a batsman than a wicket keeper in an age when guys like JT Murray and just before him Keith Andrew what very fine keepers were around and there were a lot more actually but Parks was a superb batsman beautiful offside player specifically so Parks One, is in that Walcott era as well isn't he where there were a couple of guys coming through who could certainly bat Jim's a bit younger than than Clyde Walcott but <laughs> no 50s but and 60s that's, just yeah, that, Jim, that's yeah, the period yeah. where you see it start to change because before that the only guy averaging over 31 as a wicketkeeper was Les Ame. there was no one else no Les was a real standout like like p possibly more of a batsman than than a keeper I'd say mm. I think um, the, when, when you look at the England team Mark over the years there's always been that battle for that spot haven't they it's, do you pick the best gloveman or do you pick the best batsman um, who can keep and, and if you look at England team over the last 25 years it's just been ongoing here's uh, Ben Stokes now and he bowls a Yorker straight away and he's saying it hit the toe before the bat 
Sundar's a little overbalanced. Root doesn't know what to do. There's 12 seconds, 11 seconds, now 10 left on the timer for England to review if they want to. It didn't strike me as if it got much toe, but it, that's a first glance. Uh, ben, of course, is only about 18 yards away from it. England aren't going to review. It was certainly straight and full. Well, I don't think he would have meant to have balled that first ball <laughs> at the crease, but he got it in the right areas. Probably surprised the batsman as well. But the way, yeah, he hit him straight on the bat, didn't he? He got the bottom of the bat. Good delivery to start. He can follow that up. Ben Stokes. Here he is again. Hair bouncing on his head as he bangs one into the pitch and it flies down the leg side to no avail to anybody except Ben Folks who takes it beautifully. Um, Akash Chopra is with us. Uh, Akash, good morning. Morning. Good morning, Mark. Good nice morning, to, Nice to hear your voice. Um, Wicket keepers, uh, obviously Farouk Engineer, a standard bearer for Indian keeper batsmen and a really good one too. Uh, any others who have demanded a place as a wicket keeper but not got it because they were kept out by um, a batsman right up to Riddham and Saha of course well, uh, so Riddham and Saha is one guy who comes to your mind straight away ha just oh, hang on I'm just going to sorry it was my fault bad timing just to say that Sundar was on the back foot defending there and there's no run over to you uh, so Riddham and Saha is one guy who was actually waited uh, for too long because uh, Mahendra Singh Dhoni was there and was uh, absolutely indispensable uh, uh, a top quality world class player uh, as a batsman as a keeper as a captain uh, and served Indian cricket quite nicely so Ridhiman Sai is the only guy who comes to my mind uh, who actually missed out on uh, a lot of his playing years because of uh, just the timing of his birth and his cricketing career uh, other than that I don't remember actually a lot of people missing no, out no I don't either here's uh, Ben Stokes and that's uh, about leg stump and an effort to turn it through mid wicket fails <laughs> because it goes out to deep cover <laughs> of the off the outside edge, Washington Sundar hasn't missed the middle of the bat too often. No, that's right. I mean, the, 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 it's been a crystal sort of clear situation most of the time for India. Um, both Dhoni and Gilchrist would get into my all-time one-day team. But who would I give the gloves to? Oh, Dhoni. Dhoni. Dhoni takes the gloves. Oh, but it looks so easy. Stood up, Dhoni. I used to love watching him standing up to the spinners. Yeah. Oh. And he could stand up to the seamers and sort of enjoyed the challenge. <laughs> Dhoni even took his gloves off and bowled once, didn't he, in a test match, I think. Akash will recall. Here's Stokes again. And that is also down the leg side, an appeal by Ben Folks, but nothing at all from uh, the umpire, Varenda Sharma, who, who's kept his calm well in this game, having looked a little rustled at times uh, in previous uh, test matches that he's umpired. On the England keeper front, when in our era, Mark, well, I'm just a little bit later than you, although we did play against each other. You look at the Blakey, you look at um, Hegg, you look at Rhodes, you look at Russell, you look at Stewart. We never quite knew. I think Stewart was the one we always wanted, purely because of the batting skill. But they tried plenty of other keepers. Yeah, they did, and that's defended on the front foot this time by Aksha Patel, who looks so competent. Uh, referring to him as a tail-ender is unfair. He's, he's better than that. It's the end of the Ben Stokes over. 333 for 7. 333, the famous Graham Gooch score at Lords. Of course, the lead 128 now. Um, you're, you're still there, Akash, so we'll keep yes. talking with you if we may. Why not? Let, let's, let's meander through Indian cricket. Uh, Dhoni's impact was, was far and wide. It was obviously with, with bat and gloves and in the, I think at the time, probably unique way he went about one-day chases, but in Test Match Cricket too, he had that spark to be able to change a moment. Uh, he had, uh, and of course, uh, that's the thing with the uh, like once-in-a-generation kind of player. You don't judge them by only the number of runs, the stumpings, the wickets that they take. Uh, they inspire a whole new generation of cricketers. Uh, he comes from a small town, Ranchi, and then uh, went on to lead India. And uh, led India with a lot of respect and uh, uh, just, just stamped a different kind of authority. Uh, in terms of uh, just his leadership skills and uh, yes uh, uh, as a batsman he's inspired generations so uh, as a leader as well uh, he's been that uh, leader who everybody actually looked up to oh, yeah. thank you here's uh, Jack Leach with 77 on his back and a swipe by Sundar that doesn't work it'll be a nice reminder to him that that you'd be better off keeping either straight or, or conceivably going with the big slog sweep but the ball got a bit full on him and um, 
Oh. No, I was going to say TV replaying that catch, uh, appeal for a catch down the leg side, but it did come off the thigh. Um, yeah, I mean, Washington Sundar, if he can just keep his cool, he's got Aksa with him here and two guys to come who can hold it back nicely. <sighs> it's there before him, 24 away from a Test Match 100 against uh, India. That would be a thing. Bit of a delay here, but uh, Jack Leach is ready to bowl and does so. And this time, Sundar goes straight down the ground. You couldn't wish for better. I don't think Jack Leach would be pleased with missing it. It might have even gone through his legs, but it was a good firm strike. It's four more. And the runs are coming so easily that it might almost give the England batsmen some encouragement. That the situation is manageable. Yeah, I, I know where you're coming from on that, uh, but I, I just think you've got an England team here that have, have, have been battered in two test matches in a row. They had a long day in the field yesterday. That session uh, when it got taken away from them by Pant and uh, Washington Sundar, I think it, fatigue set in. It really has for this England team. Yep, fatigue physically, yes, and physically, mentally. A forward defensive shot from a length ball. Um, makes no run 80 now for Sundar 33 for Aksha Patel these two very tall slim young men very much the future of Indian cricket tall dominant so much self-belief um, really superb but cricketers they play in all formats of the game as Sundar goes back and defends out onto the offside for no run they play all formats of the game easily increasingly I'm noticing that this business of players who play T20 can't easily adapt to the demands of test match cricket all around the world it seems that more and more can here's Leach again bowls a lovely ball that is defended comfortably by Washington Sundar I think that's right tired tired fingers tired hands but worst of all tired minds absolutely tired minds um, I think it was quite obvious I think it was good of Joe Root to, to have a go with Don Best this morning that first couple of overs might just have got him a wicket, helped his confidence, didn't work out, brought Jack Leach back into the attack. Down comes uh, Sundar and works it nicely, getting near the pitch of the ball and gets a single out to long on. But I think both the left-handers, with the ball turning into them, have been quite comfortable, haven't they? They've they looked have. comfortable against yeah. the ball which turning is, into them. So which is why Bess is playing. <laughs> <laughs> One of the many reasons Bess is playing, but hasn't been able to get his best stuff going. Um, Akash, this... Um, this move by the, the, the modern young Indian player, I just talked about their ability to play in, in all formats, but it's the confidence of the cricket. They, they don't feel out of place. Is, is this the teachings of Raul Dravid? Is it a system that's giving them opportunity young? Is it India A matches? Tell us. A, a, a lot of it actually put together because uh, it starts from the under-19 circuit. Uh, there's a very robust uh, domestic grassroots structure that's uh, in place for years now. And now with Rahul Dravid taking over uh, the reins of the younger lot because uh, Washington Sundar, Rishabh Pant, they all played under uh, uh, Rahul Dravid's tutelage. They were there when uh, Rahul was uh, actually the head coach of the India Under-19 team. Uh, even Shubman Gill, Prithvi Shaw, these all kids have actually come through the ranks uh, under the watchful eyes of uh, Rahul Dravid. So that really helps. And then the IPL as well, Mark. Ben Stokes bowls and that's full toss that uh, is worked away down the leg side. Does it go for four? No, just just a couple to Washington Sundar and uh, a little leg glance. Um, and what is Dravid's magic? We know about him as a player and a gentleman, but in terms of the teachings, what's the magic, do you think? See, the thing is, uh, one size does not fit all. And who would understand it better than uh, someone like Rahul Dravid? And that's what he keeps uh, keeps it very simple. Uh, just puts him in the on the right path. A little nudge here, a push there. Not uh, drastic, nothing dramatic, uh, because techniques can't ch can't be changed overnight. Uh, that's Rahul Dravid. Stokes again, and the forward push from Sundar that uh, is stopped at extra cover. He has 83. Aksha Vatel. 33 and the score 347 Goffey's coming in no I was just going to say Akash I worked with um, England under 19s a couple of seasons ago before the World Cup and they played against India in a one day game and I wrote a report after and India just from watching a couple of the games were about two years ahead of England under 19s um, with their, intel their cricket intelligence with bat and ball was superior to England by far Stokes again bangs it into the surface and Sundar sways nicely out of the way. 
ends up on the Absolutely deck because perfect, he, he flexed his knees and, and, and fell backwards and now he's got a dirty back. Sorry, back to you, Akash. No, a great observation, uh, Guffy, because uh, this is what we used to see with uh, Australia back in the day. Uh, when the the A teams met and I was talking to VVS Lakshman uh, mm. uh, not too long ago and uh, they remembered uh, he was talking about uh, an India A tour or Australia's A tour or under 19 tour to India and uh, they just looked a little ahead of India at that point in time and it took only a few decades for now the shoe <laughs> to be in the other foot another short ball but this one a bit wasted and no problem for the batsman in the 90s Australia could have put two international teams on the park they did in one day cricket and successfully Goffey probably played against the India the, the Australia A side India could certainly do the same now with two teams and perhaps in short form cricket even three would that be fair uh, well uh, they'll, they'll be competitive for sure yes you're right uh, in white ball cricket we've got uh, a, a rather deeper reserve in terms of uh, the options test match cricket of course uh, that's a slightly different kettle of fish yeah and now a full stroke but Stokes bangs it in again but this time Sundar stood up and hit a, a lovely shot in front of square on uh, the leg side he gets a couple more creeping along well he is uh, moving now to 85 do you think that in general given given money given power given interest uh, given you know national pride and love of the game and, and and given the fact that young men are developing fitter and stronger for cricket than ever before this really ought to be the start of a long period of dominance by India absolutely if that doesn't happen I'll be very disappointed uh, Mark because uh, this generation is looking all set and there's a lot to follow uh, and uh, you made the point about the IPL 342 for 7 at the end of that Ben Stokes over as the final ball is defended by um, Washington Sundar yeah I, I agree with that I think with India um, I wrote something last week Mark and uh, Menakash and I, I said that the mentality of this Indian team reminds me of Australia in the 90s from any situation they believe they can win um, they talk themselves up uh, big time they can back it up on the field they've got so much strength in depth whether it be in the spin department and the seam department which has always been an area um, where they've struggled to get more than two or three together but they've got seven or eight we named some of them yesterday didn't they and I'm sure there'll be some we more we got to nine didn't yeah we? I'm sure there'll be some more who will impress in the next IPL we all watch and, and have huge interest in on the batting uh, they seem pretty set they have got a couple of they've obviously still got Rahul who we've not seen this year in Agrawal uh, so they've got some very good players, haven't they? And no, they Kale, look really Kale Ravel is a superb player. Absolutely. I mean, I'm being surprised we haven't seen him. I well, really am. T quickly tell us about Kale Rahul. A very, very special player. Uh, uh, I, I think skill-wise, he's right up there uh, with the best that India has at this point in time. Uh, damn unfortunate that he can't find a place in the side because, uh, to be honest, he's actually number four in the pecking order now. You've got Mayank Agarwal waiting in the wings and then is KL Rahul for test match cricket. Of course, in white ball cricket, he's playing both the formats and he's making an impact. But now, might have to actually relinquish uh, wicket keeping because Rishabh Pant should be playing T20 cricket and KL Rahul can uh, uh, play as a batsman, perhaps as an opener and a match winner at that. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Joe Root's, gonna bowl. <laughs> uh, Joe Root's going to bowl here with a, a slip, a short extra cover. Oh, oh and he spins one it. straight past the outside edge of Aksha Patel's bat. Aksha has uh, 33, but he's played really nicely. I definitely don't call him a tail ender. I know he is a tail ender because of where he's batting in the order, but he's a far, far better player than a tail ender. Root now to bowl his second ball, and that's thrown up a little higher and slower and pushed a short extra cover. No run. Oh, yeah, I, 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 we were talking about him, but he can bat as well before. But if you look at his average so far in his short test career, it was about four before this game. But, yeah, he, he looks the part, doesn't he? It looks as though he can hold the bat. Looks pretty special. And he works route hard to mid-on. They do go through for the run, they do. I, um, and that's a, a good run, actually. Um, I, I saw him walk in in an IPL game in a hor horrendous pressure situation. And thought well for a young man here this might be too much for him and, uh, and he they needed a lot you know quick quickly and he kind of just went six four six and <laughs> absolutely no sweat at all he's got such a good it comes cut through so nicely so mm. much confident fantastic fantastic they really do play with confidence i i, I think that's the, th the thing belief and that's a just a bit over pitch from root 
and Sundar sort of digs it out towards extra cover rather than fluently times it. Got a lovely looking bat, thick at the edges, a nice bow in it, and boy, the ball pings off the middle of it. Waits now for Root, who bowls a wide long hop that he reaches just with the toe end of the bat and slaps it out to point for uh, a single. So he moves to 86. Aksa, who is now on strike, will be on 34. He's definitely getting to that stage now where the nerves will be kicking in. He's not too far away from that magic. Yeah. And now a drive to short extra cover for no run. Uh, just to Akash, because I know we're just going to finish with you here. But um, and the final thing you said, and of course, then there's the IPL. And and pick two <laughs> or three obvious advantage to young Indian cricketers in the IPL. You know, I, I'll tell you, Mark, from my own experience, the first time I played uh, in front of a packed house was my test debut at this very venue, by the way, uh, an old stadium, though. And uh, these kids, uh, one, they get to understand the pressure, uh, the, just the crowd being there. And that uh, looks external, but then it does uh, play a huge role. Uh, rubbing shoulders with the best in the world. You're uh, playing against them, with them, you learn, you uh, pick up the nuances. Uh, the awe gets uh, absolutely eliminated. Uh, it doesn't take long for you to understand, realize, acknowledge and also appreciate that uh, uh, you belong to this place. You are one of them and, uh, and, and that's a huge thing with regards to any young cricketer who's just cutting his teeth into uh, international cricket that uh, he's, he's not no longer, uh, he's, he's not in, in doubt. There are no self-doubts to actually uh, quash uh, while playing the game. He's, he already knows that he's there. Someone like Arishabh Pant, Washington Sundar, uh, KL Rahul, uh, Ashreyas Ayer. Uh, Ayer, while he was uh, like he's playing India, he's already leading a franchise. Uh, the franchise reached the finals. Uh, so these are uh, like Surya Kumar Yadav now, for example, playing the T20s. Ishan mm -hmm. Kishan. Uh, they've been player. scoring more runs than Rohit Sharma actually in uh, right. uh, in the IPL for MI. So these are players, significant yeah. advantages. There was the th three very good players. There are other quick bowlers. There are wrist spinners. And the fielding is on another level from the one it used to sit at. So, fascinating. Thanks very much, Akash. Always good to hear your voice. Um, we're with the Times. Uh, you probably know that by now. Commentary of the fourth test. Uh, the Times uh, team is led by Lizzie Ammon. Backed up by Michael Atherton and Sir Alistair Cook. The Times and the Sunday Times supporting TalkSport 2's coverage of this test series as uh, I hand over to Mark Butcher. Thanks, Mark. Wonder if uh, Sir Alistair will get anything uh, to write about on Sunday in this uh, contest. Haven't managed to make it that far in the, uh, the <laughs> last test matches. Actually, today is the day, isn't it? He will have uh, he will have something to do after his uh, duties on uh, television. Uh, perhaps wrapping up the series. Who knows? Uh, India 344 for seven. Great to hear from Akash out there in the uh, mega city that is uh, Mumbai. And the first hour has belonged to India. They have played quite superbly, these two ingenue left-handers. Greeted with uh, James Anderson and Don Best from the uh, beginning this morning. And have played everything with aplomb. Washington Sundar is couple of lusty blows away from a maiden test match 100 and Aksar Patel is adding runs to his burgeoning CV as a left arm spinner what a series he's had since coming in in the second test match in Chennai Steve Harmison is with me it's uh, more pain for England's bowlers by the looks of things yeah absolutely but you know, it's, it, it's just refreshing to see young players come into test match cricket and Express themselves and feel at home. Axar Patel has yeah, he's took it with the book, with the ball like a duck to water. And now he's enjoying himself with the bat. And every time I see Washington Sundar he, through the IPL and so far in this series when he's picked the bat up, he just looks so fluent. And for India to have a seven eight nine of Ashwin Sundar and Axar Patel just shows you the strength and depth they've got because they've obviously got Ravid Jadeja to come back and throw his his um, experience into the melting pot so all signs are, are very very good We've, Mark talked about the, the the fantastic players they've got sitting on the bench well actually the ones that are actually 1-11 are uh, not bad either so 
Um, it'd be interesting to see how close Washington Sundar does get to 100 and how much the pressure potentially comes onto him the weight of getting 100 home crowd everything that goes with it um, whether that affects him it's, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's not going to affect him at all you know he's, he hasn't looked as though he's, yeah, I'm with uh, you Butch I'm with you <laughs> it doesn't look as though he's had any trouble at all. I mean, it's interesting you talk about the, the depth of, of India's batting lineup because, of course, when, when we get back to England, England play the test matches in the summer, five test series against India and uh, also test matches against New Zealand. We'll be saying the same about England, won't we? They'll have the likes of Chris Wokes and Sam Curran in the mix. They'll bat all the way down to, uh, as uh, Stokes is in, to Sundar, who's on the back foot, punches it to, to up to mid-on, and uh, he will take his score... 287, the uh, Australians' uh, evil number. Um, so, you know, England haven't been able to put that sort of depth on the park, uh, largely due to the fact that you need to play two spinners pretty much every time in, in Indian conditions, but also because of their some own slightly doing. muddled thinking yeah, with their selection. Own doing. Yeah, that, a lot of it is down to their own doing. And so you can't stick up for them from that point of view. Stokes round the wicket. Oh, he gets the, uh, the the top shoulder of the bat. That ball bounced sharply on Axart, uh, who had no idea where it was going. As it was, it went fine of gully and down to uh, third man for a single. But Stokes still able to extract a little bit of extra something from this surface on day three. Yeah, there's something there. If you, they hit the pitch hard, there is, there is something there. We talked about... England and when they get to England when India get to England it's going to be a different ball game for Ashwin Sundar and Patel because all three of them stand up and play the short ball they don't tend they don't look to duck it they don't look to sweat they actually set themselves up for a target and that is dangerous in England so it'll be a different challenge when they come over to 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 the UK um, and I would imagine there'll be a lot of England fast bowlers watching if they do get ball in hand there'll be a lot more short balls than full balls Sundar on strike now. He takes on the hook shot. And uh, the leg side field was packed, is packed. And it went between the two fielders. There was one just in front of square, saving one at square leg. One at mid wicket. The ball went between those two and ended up at uh, deep mid wicket. Who fielded it. There's also a short leg. There's also a man at deep backward square. So it's, uh, it's pretty obvious the approach that Ben Stokes is going to be taking to Washington Sundar. But he uh, survives that challenge and moves to 88 so Axar on strike now lead is 142 and growing Stokes in again round the wicket Axar pats the bat on the ground and then ducks underneath that one as if to stay to Steve Harmson I can play it that way as well if you like and uh that Stokes was, that was short that much <laughs> well it was, <laughs> was yeah short. I mean the interesting thing it will be obviously when it comes to selection from India, we've just been hearing about the, the great riches that they have in terms of strength and depth. We know that they have <coughs> terrific fast bowling resources as well as the spinners. I mean, it's, it's not as though it's not as though India needed to play England on raging Bunsen's to beat them in India, because they've got bases covered um, in in all departments. As Stokes is in once more, again short, and again Axar ducks underneath it with a bit of a periscope sticking up the bat in the air behind him but it passes through to folks with no trouble you know the, the bowling resources that they can call on so Ishant playing this game Bumrah who pulled out of this one not because he didn't get a bowl in the last test but for personal reasons although the personal reasons might have been that he didn't get a bowl in the last test we don't know um, then you've got uh, the likes of Umesh Yadav you've got the likes who doesn't actually get a game very often Mohamed Shami who has had been out of this series with injury? I wonder if uh, if India is, is Akshar is on the back foot defending that onto the offside. There is no uh, run at the end of that over. I wonder if uh, India will have the same problem trying to balance their attack in English conditions. And, I, and my guess is they won't. No, I don't think I don't think they will. I think I like Shami. I think Shami's a fantastic bowler in. He'd be an excellent bowler in, in English conditions. But you say there, Butch, and you, you, just to pick up on a point that you mentioned, India, India don't have to play England on Ridge and Bunsen's to, to beat them. But actually, up until tea time yesterday, on the two, two good wickets we played on, 
England have actually been the better side. England have been the better side, and that was something that you wouldn't have thought at the start of the series. Well, yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. When Joe Root made a double hundred in the in the first Test match, for sure. But England still only made England still only made two hundred and five batting first. St they still only made two hundred and five batting first on a good deck, you know. So, and, it, and India are just about to to they go up to 150 lead in the first innings they've got a big score in the first innings of the first test yeah, match but that's, good, but that's the only time wicket, the yeah. only time but that's what I'm saying on and, a, they, and they failed to make 200 until yesterday since then as Joe Foot is in and uh, the drive is for extra cover from Washington Sundar I, all I'm but saying is, is that when at tea, tea time yesterday England were England was still you know well in the game if not in the better better position because of, of batting last on it yeah for sure but but my feeling is that India, in particular, if you looked at the way that the uh, the openers played or the way Rohit played yesterday, big spin from Joe Root and it's collected by folks who, as he will, whips the bails off uh, swiftly and smartly, but uh, nothing doing, was that India knew that England would, would be dead come the last session and they basically played for it. Yes, they lost a few wickets along the way, but by the time having spent the field uh, the day in the field with the, uh, the heat up around the 40 degree mark, they knew that they'd be able to make England play in the last session and they did um, all I'm saying is is that any team can go out there and make big runs on a flat one in India but over the course of a four match series you're very very unlikely to beat an Indian, Indian team if the pitches are all fair like that that's all yeah, I agree with that yeah big turn again from Joe Root that uh, low arm spearing the ball into uh, the rough Aksar Patel lets it go, but there's a big, big puff of dust. This is exactly what you'd expect on day three. Nothing untoward there. Big turn, good take from folks. Root quicker, shorter. Aksar on the pull. Doesn't time it, but it goes out to long on for a single. Lead is 149 now. Uh, sorry, 144. Score is 349 for seven. So it'll be interesting. I mean, in India have not played well in England the last two tours. They've been uh, they've been beaten soundly on ball beats the outside edge from Root, who holds his head in his hands at the end of the 110th over. 3:49 for seven. Lead is 144. Ring England bowling India out very very cheaply at the oval on a on a biscuit coloured surface. No no green grass to be seen game was over in three days it's going to be intriguing to see what England groundsmen produce because of you know we the talk about you know what is England's best surface is it something which is doing a bit do they get can you get your your broads your Andersons your Wokes overhead conditions if the summer is a, a summer where it is quite warm and quite muggy but also you've got a factor in as well you know counties counties have, have just had a covid yeah they look to recoup some money so there'll be a lot of pressure on them pitchers to go you know into the fourth into the fifth day which all of a sudden brings if it does they, they do t deteriorate and it does take spin then india are, are, are more chance as in are long as as the game gets into the longer format of the the, the test match mm. well I, you know i'm quite happy for england to to play on to play them on good surfaces I, you know the, the home advantage comes with the fact that the ball may swing and it may seem a little i don't think you need to to play on things that are, that are emerald green in order to win series at home england haven't done that haven't needed to do that as that bouncer goes over the head of Axar from Stokes no 100% and I think the, 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 the conditions above rather than below I think that's when England are actually at their best you know, on a good flat surface where the batters can feel comfortable playing in their own environment and if it does come from, from up above and they do get some nice humid conditions well you know, they've, they've, they've got the armoury and the artillery to, to exploit that Stokes in once more, short leg in place, short ball is uh, ducked underneath, it's sort of a duck sway from uh, Axar, who's 36, partnership now is, uh, is 90, lead is 144, just thinking back at the, the one time that England did play, I mean, remember that pitch at Lords against India, I can't remember which tour that was now, but it was 
green as anything. Yeah, it was the, not last one, the one before. Yeah, Co- I mean, the year Coley struggled. Rahani made a hundred, didn't he? And Ishant took uh, took ten wickets in the match. England got hoist by their own petard on a, on a real green one. Won the series anyway, but it was uh, there was a lesson for you. Pull shot from Axar Patel keeps it down nicely. Dan Lawrence fields a deep uh, backward square leg, and they come through for a single. And that's the 350 up for uh, India. Yeah, I think that was the point I was trying to make on the on the, the flatter surface, the two flatter surfaces that have been in this Test match. England have have done relatively well on, and the two 50-50 surfaces where the, the, the spinners, you know, the spin was the what was what was driving the game, where you think that would bring England in, more into the contest. Um, that's when England have, have really been found found wanting and I think that would happen if you produce green green seamers that if England lost the toss in Shami and Ishant Stokes is in again it's a short ball again the hook has been taken on this time by uh, Washington Sundar gets it between the legs of Ollie Pope at short leg and they come through for a single Sundar is into the 90s Yeah, that's. Right. I mean, you know, the the more the more weighted you make the the conditions one way or the other, the more you bring the supposedly weaker team into the game. Which is why it's it's been a, a bit of a surprise, really, that India have played on the two surfaces that they did in the second test in Chennai and the first in Ahmedabad. But they they won the test matches, so I suppose they're happy. But batting second in that uh, second test in Ahmedabad is. Uh, Axar goes on the back foot, defends down by his feet, and there's no run. You know, batting second in that second test in our matter. England made 150 in that first innings, which they they should have done. Yeah. What were they 70 for three? 70 then for India, three. Then India struggling in that game. I, you know, I, I have no doubt about that yeah, because the pitch I, was so poor. Well, we talked about the 49 for none at the at the end and that in the second innings, but you stick a one in front of that in front of that 49 and chasing 150 on that last last you know the, the last innings on that surface would have been very very difficult Stokes in another good bounce up incredible reserves of energy from uh, Ben Stokes 111 overs gone 351 for 7 India 146 runs ahead and uh, increasingly Joe Root having uh, nowhere to go in terms of his bowling options his two senior men uh, seam bowlers anyway have given pretty much everything they've got but it'll come the time when he's going to have to go double spin and uh, he's already decided that it's uh, time for him to take a long spell at the bowling crease Joe Root it's uh, very very challenging to be an England fielder right now Heat is blazing down out there in Ahmedabad. And uh, India showing no signs whatsoever of a, a, a late order collapse. No, definitely not. And the concerning thing from an England fan and somebody who you know that that middle order is going to be so crucial. The, the, the effort that Ben Stokes has put into his bowling, you, you just hope it doesn't have an effect on his batting. Square drive from... Washington Sundar, nine away from a maiden test match hundred now. When I think with the balance of uh, of England's attack, I mean the ridiculous thing is, is you've got Ben Stokes who bats at number five being one of your main bowlers and they still haven't been able to balance the attack properly. As uh, Akshar is on the back foot, cutting to backward point. And there is no run. James Anderson with the fielding, with a rueful look on his face. Yeah, and you look at how many overs Stokes and... Was there an edge, or is it turned straight out of the rough? It was a big drive, and the ball has flashed between folks and a diving Ben Stokes. Let's keep an eye on the umpire here. He's been given uh, buys. It didn't hit anything. But sharp turn out of the rough once more from... Uh, Joe Root. Ben Folks has not had his tidiest innings behind the stumps. Big, big spin. Big spin. Big spin. Big puff of dust. Huge chunk out of the wicket, but it was out the rough. It was out the footholes. Go! 
lofted by Axa into a wide open space over extra cover. Jack Leach runs round to his right to pick up from uh, long off. And the two left-handed spin bowling all-rounders come back for two. Axar's 39 now. Lead is uh, 151. And this is getting desperate for England. His route is in once more. Drilled back down at the bowler who can only stick out a left boot to uh, interrupt the ball's progress. And Axar goes into the 40s. And just hear the crowd as the little looks as though there's a little bit more in today than what there was yesterday. You just hear them, just noise is just getting a little noisier, but the England fielders are just looking deflated. They look as though they are, they are waiting for, for the inevitable. Defence from uh, Washington Sundar finishes Joe Roots over 357 for seven lead is 152 you're listening to commentary of the fourth test between India and England on TalkSport 2 with the Times and the Sunday Times cricket team led by Lizzie Ammon and former England captains Mike Atherton and Sir Alistair Cook next up Manners thank you Butch yeah, well, 98 runs now for uh, the eighth wicket between the two spin bowling all-rounders, as you said, Mark Butcher. And uh, England... I was going to say England are going to have to dig deep, but they've been digging deep through the entire test match. I'm not sure there's anything left. I'm, they can't go any deeper. They've uh, run out of resources. Yeah, unfortunately, we've, we've said this many times, and it's been the, Eng it's been the bowling attack that's had to do the... the you know, the digging deep and go into that well for that little bit more. I think a couple of times in Chennai, definitely on day one of this test match, at the end of the day, you know, thinking England are at low, at rock bottom. They've got to dig deep to come out. They did lunchtime on 80 for four yesterday. Ben Stokes has uh, dug deeper than most, and he's in with another bouncer, which Axar ducks underneath and remains on 40. Washington Sunder has 91. India 357 for seven there, there does come a point I mean I know that there'll be uh, some people listening saying well you never give up you there's always something left in the well you, you keep going for, for that last effort that last ounce of uh, determination but uh, there, there does come a point where physically I mean if not spiritually and emotionally you, uh, you you're spent here is uh, Stokes once again short pulled away it's a super shot lovely pull shot hook shot from uh, Akshar Patel only a single Ben Stokes has a man out in the deep for protection yeah and but unfortunately when your game plan is horribly wrong and you're a bowler short and you know the, the seventh wicket partnership was was 113 the eighth wicket partnership is is closing to three figures as well um there are and you've only got limited resources you just think where you know, where where's it going to end where is this where is this nightmare going to end for ben stokes and jimmy anderson here is uh, stokes once again another bouncer outside the off stump and uh it's left alone by washington sunder and there's Sorry, man. And there's also a point where, as a captain, Joe Root, he's got to look at Ben Stokes and think, well, we're going to need him to get his feet up for a little bit because he might have to bat for the best part of a best part of a deer or, you know, 60, 70 overs if England have got any chance of contributing to some to, to something special in this Test match. India three fifty-eight for seven. The last wicket fell, the total on 259. This partnership is worth 99. Here is Ben Stokes again. Short pulled once more out towards mid wicket, and it's beaten Dom Sibley in that position. And it's an excellent diving stop. Really good effort from Dom Bess out on the uh, wide, long on boundaries, running around from deep mid wicket. And he's managed to save the boundary, I think, although the third umpire will be interested in having another look at it because uh, his dive was very very close to uh, the boundary triangles but uh, it brings up the century partnership whatever excellent commitment from uh, Don Bess 
actually grabbed it cleanly in his right hand and as he was sliding towards the boundary he managed to uh, throw the ball back inside the ropes although as I said Anil Chowdhury the third umpire is going to have a close look at this just to see whether he was in fact in contact with his right knee with the boundary as he was flicking it back no I think he's done well uh, done well the worrying thing for me as a bowler and I'm not 100% sure because we can't we're not on the ground and we can't tell but if that was if I was Ben Stokes I'd be unhappy with Dom Sibley that he's literally dived over it at, at mid-wicket he's gone down in installments I think even now four stone heavier than what I was when we fighting with it might have had a better chance of stopping it um, and that's something else that, that just upsets bowlers and you're thinking I'm working my pluck out I'm giving it everything I'm throwing everything in to try and get this wicket um, and whether it's lack of concentration or whatever he's, he's not he's not throwing his body at it but fair play to Tom Best I think he's done well oh they've given has he given four no no just the two still it brings up uh, the 100 partnership as I said 102 from just 171 deliveries 361 for seven here is uh, Ben Stokes and it's uh, pushed away up towards mid-wicket again Jimmy Anderson this time is in quickly attacks the ball picks it up cleanly but uh, an easy single nonetheless yes Jared just to correct Harmy I've actually got two corrections for Harmy one is that that was Jimmy Anderson who missed that uh, last one I'll let him off with that then yeah uh, I did I did say <laughs> I wasn't I did say I wasn't sure I, I, I didn't sneak in this it does say a lot for Jimmy. Sibley's fitness regime of recent times that you could have confused the two. Uh, a little while back, you may not have confused those two. Also, Akhtar Patel, last night, you said he made his 95 at Riverside. I think he made it in Cardiff. Um, not a big deal. It's still... Here is Stokes again. Bangs it in short. Turned away behind square on the leg side for another single. Washington Sunder is closing in on a landmark that uh, he will remember for uh, the rest of his life and it might not be the first one uh, if he can keep a place in this Indian team <laughs> I don't know whether he will be able to how many more test matches he'll play but uh, he's 95 not out Akshar Patel 42 363 for 7 he only played uh, 4 or 5 championship games didn't he Akshar Patel for Durham in yeah he didn't, he didn't play a, a great deal but I think he enjoyed the experience um, the lads loved having him around they did it, I think he went down very very well at Durham um, he speaks with massive fondness he's mentioned his spell yeah. at Durham several times already in no, this well, I'm not surprised I think you know, when you do come to Durham and you do live in the centre of Durham you've got a chance of a, a good, good enjoyment for <laughs> five or six weeks when you, when you pop in and pop out it's, uh, and if he's gone down to Cardiff he's experienced uh, you know, the, the whole of the British Isles in some decent spots so no he's I think his education in life, but also his, his cricket education has, uh, has done very, very well for him. Jared, tell us a little bit more about Washington Sunder. Are you about to tell us about something else, though? Sorry. No, I was just thinking of uh, how much he learned about life in, <laughs> in Durham for about five or six weeks in the centre of town. He'll know what, he, he know, he know what it's like to wear three or four jackets of a morning. <laughs> <laughs> Learn how to bowl in long sleeve jumpers. <laughs> You're telling us about Washington Sunder and his IPL career and uh, um, and his future prospects, but here is uh, Joe Root continuing. I was just curious if you could tell us a bit more about Washington Sunder's first-class uh, record and just how good he is as a batsman um, and as an all-rounder. But mind you, Indian national players don't play very much first-class cricket, do they? He, he didn't play a game for almost four years. Oh, high full toss from Joe Root. And uh, it's pushed away for a single down towards Don Bess at long on. That's, it is absolutely extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, you know, I'm saying, well, what's Washington Sunder's first class career like? And you're basically telling me he doesn't have one. He's yeah, he, uh, <laughs> once you play in that India white ball setup, and especially because he was, uh, you know, very much part of the under 19, because he, he started so young. So, uh, part of the under-19 team, then the under-21s with Sir Raul Dravid, then he was with the, at the academy. He just didn't play first-class cricket, but they were setting him up to be a white ball cricketer. That wasn't by accident either. Here is uh, Joe Root once oh, again, yeah, and off the back foot, Akshar Patel punches it into the covers and sets off for an easy single. It's a bizarre concept. I mean, he's identified at 17. He's been put into the white ball pigeonhole. Well, the age of 17. Yeah, I think it's partly because we were talking about his bowling before. 
he had that very accurate... It doesn't look like it's going to translate to Test Match Cricket, his bowling. I know he has bowled quite well at times already. Routine again outside the off stump, left alone. But when you watch him, you don't naturally think that's a Test Match bowler. In, in a way that, you know, if you watch someone like um, Krunal Pandya, another young Indian talent, again, you probably don't think they're Test Match bowlers, whereas Akshar Patel, you, you think he could probably bowl in anything. Outside the off stump, wide here from Joe Root, deliberately so, left alone, 365 for seven. I think the package, all round package, he turns himself into a, a decent, you know, higher up the, the order, and Pant at six, Washington Sundar possibly at seven. He could play that second all rounder's role. Root again, low full toss, dipping, driven towards uh, Johnny Bairstow at mid on. And uh, Bester gets a throw in very quickly. Root takes the bails off, and they've referred this. I go on Gareth Batty's given it out. Sorry, I'm going on reactions, and I'm not sure if Bats has picked that up as well. But you go off players' reactions. Dan Lawrence is standing right next to Stumps, and he's fingers in the air. He's giving this out. Dan Lawrence was right over the top of this. Stand by. Well, that was brilliant work from Johnny Bairstow. I tell you what, and uh, what a throw. Yes. He, uh, he's indeed, he is gone. Yeah. Aksha Patel has been run out. Excellent, fabulous work from Johnny Bairstow. Just when you thought that England's uh, body language indicated that they were gone in mind, body, spirit and soul, the uh, Yorkshireman has reacted incredibly quickly at mid on. Fabulous throw, right next to the stumps, right next to the stumps. Joe Root takes it six inches from the stumps and then almost misses them. With his, he took the ball in front of the stumps dragged it back towards the stumps almost missed them but the bail just falls off and Aksar Patel is oh, six inches short six inches short good bit of fielding by Johnny modern wear modern wear a lot of the old timers will say take the ball behind the stumps and then go to it Joe's got his hands in front of the stumps takes the, takes the bails off and breaks what it was what is being a fantastic partnership an unbelievable partnership from, in, from India taking the game away from England, Axar Patel, and you want something special from the field when nothing much is happening with you know, the bowling and you know, things are going quiet. You want something special from the field, whether it's a wonderful catch or a brilliant run out. Um, a little bit of ball watching, you'd probably get you could fault there from Axar Patel, but excellent bit of fielding by Johnny Bestow. Good take by Joe Root, and England will hope and pray they can get these two wickets quickly, get off get the pads on um, and trying to get challenging back into this test match I would imagine that Jimmy Anderson and Ben Stokes have uh, got their their heart set on a if not an entire ice bath then at least one for their feet uh, did you want to go into uh, Washington Sunday? yeah I think we yeah. should because he's still there he's 96 not out has he got, how many first class hundreds has he got he's got one first class hundred uh, he's got this is his 16th first class game uh, in how many years? Uh, he started in 2016. Okay. So in his first first year, uh, he played his first uh, 11 games, and then since then, it's uh, all been test matches. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a ridiculous record. So he played his last first class game, and I mean first class by non as as in non test, in November of 2017. <laughs> Okay, in that gr game, which just tells you how much he's matured and changed in that time. In that game, he bowled 23 overs, one for 89. So when it almost four runs and over, uh, he batted at number six. Uh, I don't think he picked up any in the second innings. Uh, he, he just got the one wicket uh, and made 18. So he failed in that game. Did, you know, for, by his standards, didn't do very well. But a couple of games before that, he opened the batting for Tamil Nadu. And they're a very strong first-class team as well. Opened the batting for them and made 159 of 231 balls opening the batting. Uh, not great bowling, and to be fair, uh, R. Ashwin batted at five or six, I think, in that game as well. So uh, It's just extraordinary. I mean, it's like being a Formula One driver and going everywhere on a bicycle when you're not on the track. And then his, uh, his, f and then his first game back. So after all this, so he made that 100 about midway through that first season. Uh, struggled a little bit with the bat towards the end of that season. Turns up at the Gabba. Uh, because he has to play because they don't literally have another human body um, available to them and he makes 62 at the Gabba to help them uh, win the game in the first inning. So for what it's worth his first class batting average is 
It's currently 38, but that's mostly this. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. He's 96, not out. But is Ishant Sharma on strike now? Oh, that's LBW. <laughs> Full and straight from Ben Stokes. He doesn't even turn round. That is as out as you can possibly get. I think Ishant was walking. That is a, virtually a half volley hitting the base of middle stump. Goffey. Well, you want to be bowling at this stage. Ben Stokes, full delivery. Didn't do anything. Didn't swing or anything. Just straight at the stumps. Ishant Sharma prefers to play against spin, shall we say, than seem shuffled across his stumps, trying to fling it through mid-wicket. And it's absolutely plumb. He walked. <laughs> 365 for nine bats. He actually <laughs> did, didn't he? He walked. He was almost walking as it hit him. Because he got his balance so wrong. We talk about trigger movements and back and across, but he'd gone back and across and then back and across a bit more and his head was falling over. And uh, in the end, he'd, he'd got into a horrible mess and he was falling across towards point and bang in front of all three. He puts uh, Siraj in a, a position now where he comes to the crease and he's going to try and stay there as usual. The number 11 has to come to the crease and help the batsman Sundar who's on 96 to get to that century which we said um, about an hour ago didn't we he said it's a long way away 26 27 well, yeah. runs <laughs> you and know, now it's even longer there Four. was no there was no uh, rueful look on Washington Sundar's face we uh, he looked he looks absolutely distraught and he's still he's got the number 11 with him but he looks well, what can he do? He can't do anything. He looks like a man watching his own house burn down, <laughs> and there's nothing from across the street. There's nothing he can do about it. And, and if he gets it right here, Ben Stokes, and he gets the, the perfect delivery to the number 11. It is Siraj on strike. Stokes into him, oh, oh, and he pushes oh. it a wide one and misses it. Didn't fancy nowhere. That. Didn't fancy that one, did he? The number no. 11, Siraj. Just legs. The legs went the wrong way there. They went towards square leg umpire. And he makes a difference. As soon as you get a little bit of carry, a little bit of pace to a tail ender, um, it's a totally different ball game. When you go to the crease and there's two spinners on, you're quite happy. They can't hit you on the head, right? But as soon as you've got a bowler who we know can get it up to 90 miles an hour, it makes such a big difference to the mentality of a tail ender. Poor old Washington Sunder watches on again from the non strikers end on 96. Stokes in. Oh, that's down the leg side. Relief for Washington Sunder. <laughs> and let's not forget, in, the, in England's first innings, there was a little bit of needle, Stokes and Siraj. So maybe he's uh, going to carry that burden, Stokes. And is he going to just let him have a bit of chin music? Well, that's what he would probably expect it, I would say, because he wasn't happy, Ben. I mean, it, it's just the way he said it in the press conference. He made out as though he were total abuse, wasn't it? And I think Ben wasn't too happy about the way he worded it. So we'd probably be expecting a bouncer. India lead by 160. Here is Stokes. Bowled him! He's bowled him! Washington Sundar is left stranded on 96. Mohamed Siraz was expecting the bouncer. He was backing away. In the end, he had to grope forward for a full-length delivery that clatters into his off stump. Siraj has gone. Ben Stokes has two wickets in the over to finish with. Four for 89. And India's innings has finally come to an end at 365 for a first innings lead of 160. Oh, just rewards here for Ben Stokes. He's toiled for 27.4 overs in 40 degree heat. When the attack around him was failing a bit, Ben Stokes stood up 4 for 89. Just reward with that last wicket, Siraj bowled straight and full as Goffey said. Uh, no, no damage there, but spare a thought for Washington Sundar played so well. 96 not out, stranded, 174 balls, held the, the, the back end of this innings together from India and put them in a, a pretty, pretty strong position within the game. But uh, Ben Stokes, four wickets and uh, congratulations, sir. Yeah, I think it goes to show, doesn't it, the mentality of a cricketer in this situation. Let's say a little bit of needle between Stokes and Siraj in that first innings and he just didn't fancy it did he? he came to the crease thought he was going to get the odd short ball but Ben kept his cool pitched the ball up not where he wants it to be and uh, got his rewards but knocking over the two 10 and 11 both on zero and poor Washington Sunder after what is actually a terrific knock huge congratulations to him but he finishes on 96 not out a fantastic knock to go alongside Richard Pant's 
a great hundred in this first innings for India and what a position they are in 365 all out of 114.4 overs a fantastic couple of days in the field for India you're listening to commentary of the fourth test between India and England on TalkSport 2 with the Times and the Sunday Times cricket team writing with an edge so just to sum up what's happened uh, this morning India resumed on 294 for 7 and they dominated uh, the first hour until the, finally uh, the breakthrough came after uh, a partnership of 108 between Aksar Patel and Washington Sundar. Aksar was finally run out for 43 from 97 deliveries. Really, really top work from Johnny Bairstow, who's had a very quiet test match. Um, doesn't seem to have been much in the action in the field either, but when he was required, he reacted... Uh, with a great spring and unexpected spring in his step at mid on uh, got the throw into Joe Root and the Axar run out for 43 and then Ben Stokes wrapped things up in the 114th over of the innings when he had trapped uh, Ishant Sharma LBW first ball and then bowled Mohamed Siros in number 11 with the third delivery both went uh, without scoring and Ben Stokes finished with 4 for 89 which uh, I have to say thoroughly deserved after uh, the hard work that he's put in Jimmy Anderson 3 for 44 and uh, Jack Leach 2 for 89 but uh, the fact that Ben Stokes and Jimmy Anderson took 7 of uh, the 9 wickets that fell to bowlers it's just you would have to say looks very much like further evidence that England got their team selection horribly wrong 160 England are behind it has the look and the feel of of a, of a match winning first innings lead but um, that's not what England's <laughs> top order needs to be telling themselves it's their last chance in the series well let's, let's be honest about it if England win this from here it'll be one of the great test victories I mean 160 lead India have got there and to be fair they've got a bat all day really um, just to get probably up on on par with India it's going to be very very difficult you've got an Indian bowling attack that are full of confidence you've got Mohamed Siraj who's fresh he's hungry he's got great energy at the crease when he bowls he bowls a terrific pace he's quicker than the England bowlers you've got Isan Sharma got great experience 300 test wickets over 100 tests and then you've got two spinners let's be honest to have been absolutely outstanding well, uh, uh, Goffey, since uh, coming to the side I'm so going to hand over to Mark Nicholas now and I'll do so with the, with this thought and I'll throw it to you actually Bats you've got two spinners England England have lost 70 wickets in this test series and two bowlers have taken 49 of those 70 wickets two bowlers I mean if they are not manifestly in England's batsmen's heads well they are uh, then uh, anyway here's Mike Nicholas <laughs> well, I thought you were doing great why would you why would you I, don't, I just got told in my ear that it was, oh, it was well, you don't, time for you to right. take ignore over. producers when there are moments of brilliance coming out of your coming out of your mouth I'm sure Ollie wouldn't have objected to you continuing um, okay so if it's going to be one of the great test match wins how do they go about it? Firstly, they have to think 300, don't they? They've got to, they, the, the, the difference between the sides here is, is 160. Yeah. So they've got to ask them to score 140 on a deteriorated pitch. 300 takes them through till uh, after lunch tomorrow. Yep. Um, if they could make 300, they have a real chance. And they do. They there's do. a lot you, of risks. You have there's to say they do. I understand you're dubious about the bowling I'm, and the I'm spinners and all that, but, but they have a chance. I'm just dubious, Mark, because what we've seen the last two test matches, and we talk about the mentality, and Bats will get into it, the quality of their spinners. But I think when the mentality are two big defeats for England, they've just spent, what, a day and a bit in the field. They're absolutely exhausted. They're now going to go out and bat. Ben Stokes could be in. Goffey, we're, the ma we're making, he could be in within we're an hour. making commercial entertainment here. Yeah, but I'm just giving you my honest <laughs> We're opinion. We're selling the dream. I'm Goffey. desperate for England to win, and I was the last Test match I gave England actually was a great comeback, and I gave <laughs> them the big up. You know, what I mean, a fantastic. And England were on the verge of a huge, huge upset. So I'm not going to get too carried away this time. If they go and win it, it'll be an absolutely fantastic uh, no, win, look, I, I, and it'll be a fantastic series to leave uh, to all. But I cannot see it. No, I, I listen. I'm with you, and and uh, just having a bit of fun with it. But I. I think a few things actually. Gareth, you go first, and then I'll 
coming over. Well, I think the bigger picture is there's a few lads who will be looking at their future careers in this innings. They'll want to put down a marker. They'll want down. They'll want to be showing people that they've learnt from an experience in India. They've learnt from watching some of their batters. They've learnt from uh, how to play in these conditions. So that there's those individual uh, little battles going on. I, I I I do stand by it, and I I'm always glass half full. If India had to chase three figures. England do have a very, very slight chance. And Goffey said it earlier, the reason uh, why it was flattered a little bit the last Test match, because it was only 40, 48, 49 that they were chasing uh, and they got it non-down. Had that have been 100, well, it would have been a totally different psychological um, barrier. And why that is, I can't explain it. But for whatever reason, there are psychological barriers uh, within cricket and it, it's magical numbers. So England definitely need to be setting three figures. Uh, but as I say, you've got to go back to some, some young fellas who need to put a bit of a marker down for their career and almost so that we can be sat here in a few years' time saying, well, this was probably the turning point for him playing against spinners uh, in India and, and we could see a, a process that was going to work for him over a long period of time. Got some good stats floating around here. Washington Sundar is the 33rd batsman stranded unbeaten inside of just one striking blow of 100. Um, so obviously that's 94 and upwards. He's the third Indian player after... God, did you... Go, Goffey, do you ever see Gundapa Vishwanath? But he was 97 not out when the innings ended against the West Indies in Madras. And Dilip Bensaka, 98 not out. That was in Colombo. Um, you see either of them play? Bensaka, yeah. He were good, isn't he? Yeah. Beautiful, play. upright player. And then Vishy was different. He was a, a, a small man, squat almost roundish and I don't mean that unkindly it was his natural build and um, well it was <laughs> it was naturally fat <laughs> no 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 round no round I said he didn't eat round. himself I never said fat. fat he didn't eat himself fat it was I just didn't round say fat. I tell you about this he did enjoy a whiskey that's what he really enjoyed he, he was loved a Mr. Scotch. still does Mr. Tickle <laughs> this he's the brother-in-law of Sonny Gavaskar is he yep and uh, uh, and he he could really play he was brilliant uh, cutter and and a glancer of the ball, quite an old-fashioned player, not not quite as far back as Ranji or Dulip, but but certainly of that of that ilk. So they're the two Indians that have done it. It's it's um, another good one here. Only the third time in all the tests that have been played, and that's I don't know two and a half thousand, I guess, that that there have been a hundred stands for the seventh and eighth wickets. Washington Sundar are a part of both of those, of course. Once with Rishab Pant and then with Aksha Patel. Um, he finished unbeaten on 96 if you've just joined us which was a, a blow for him but I don't think in any way uh, it'll always be remembered as a special innings and perhaps it'll be talked about more as the one that got away um, clearly he doesn't have his first test 100 but he certainly deserved it um, and we should go back to Rishabh Pant of course remember at one stage this innings was 146 for 6 and we really wondered if England might have a first innings lead now they've got a first innings deficit of 160 as uh, the players have made their way out in the middle another very hot day in Ahmedabad so much so that um, full marks to Ben Stokes who didn't feel 100% yesterday to get through the overs he did and the effort he did it was very much sort of one of Stokes's matches and you sort of expect him to do something with the bat I think in this second innings but well, as I said um, going into this test Ben Stokes we hadn't seen anything really special from him in this series and you normally see something which is outrageous don't you uh, and the match so far I think he's been outstanding I thought he played really well in the first innings I think his heart and desire with a ball in hand um, ball in there to pick up four wickets now can he do one of his innings and make a magnificent 100 and turn it because when you're talking about batting and the reason I've kind of not lost faith in England but when you be talking there about the way they looked at the crease Sundar and Patel batting at 8 and 9 for India right they look technically better than our top 6 except for Joe Root against spin they look technically better or is it just the eye quality difference in the spin ball in department oh, look, there, there is a and I'm not being harsh here there is a difference in the quality um, but you, I think you, you mentioned it on air, it's the bat path, isn't it? The Indians seem to have a better bat path, it's a clear bat path, which then there's no confusion of coming across the line of the ball, which from a spinning point of view is the, uh, is the thing that you're trying to, um, I suppose, expose in a batsman. It's confident, isn't it, bats? We're talking about that bat swing, it's so fluent, 
and confident in the shot they're playing. You don't get that clarity with England's batsmen, and that's the problem. Mohamed Shiraz with the new ball then. Crowd behind him, you can hear them, I'm sure. There's not that many of them in the ground. Here he comes to Zach Crawley, who leaves alone outside of stump. It did swing, however, which is very encouraging for Mohamed Shiraz. And it bounced like uh, probably chest high through to the keeper. So the scene is set. India with three slips and the gully. Mohamed Siraj has all this energy and he, 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 he's a hustler. He, you know he's going to be at you. You know you won't get much breathing space. He'll bowl shortish spells. Kohli loves him, loves his attitude. Kohli promotes these young Indians that want to get in your face a bit. Here he comes again, bowls again, Crawley, that's a very good delivery and a good leave, whoa, whoa, very last minute leave alone, had that ball kept going straight it would have uh, knocked off Stump out of the ground, but it swung away and Crawley survived. The Kent leave, right there, uh, great delivery actually from Mami Shiraz, first ball, back of a length, great carry to the wicket keeper, a little bit of shape, second ball, similar length, bringing the batsman forward, not as much carry, but the same swing. Good start here from India. Siraj again. Left alone again by Crawley from outside off stump. But that pointed beard sported by Virat Kohli, quite long and then shaped into a point at its base, is copied by a number of the Indian players, not least Mohammed Siraj. Such is the influence of Virat Kohli, the powerhouse of Indian cricketer in the slip region, Chedeshwar Pajara. Roit Sharma, Virat Kohli, three exceptional players looking upon Zach Crawley. What have you got, son? They're asking him. Siraj again, dead straight. Beautifully played by Crawley. He was late on the ball, but he got a lot of the middle of the bat on it, and he picked out mid-wicket, unfortunately. He won't want to play as square as that against the new ball, but it did angle in at him, that one, rather than swing away. Looks like the seam was deliberately scrambled. Nice dark ball they've chosen. Like the old adage was, the darker the ball, the more chance it has of swinging. And it used to be a dark ball was quite often smaller. I don't know why. Smaller. Yeah, It's the weird. oddest thing. I think it has to be a trick of the light. Or maybe just a trick of the mind. Left alone, an outswinger outside off stump. There's a picture uh, in the paper today of a, a tanker at sea. And the impression of it is that it's floating. 20 feet or more above the ocean line. Incredible picture and apparently it's just a trick of the light. I say that apropos not very much really but I just like the picture. I've, I've just been looking at it this second. I can't wait to have a look Mark. Yeah I'll show it to you. It's an <laughs> amazing picture. Show me in the <laughs> interval. Oh, well, it's an amazing. Harmy I've got a better picture than that. Here comes uh, Shiraz again, uh, Siraj again. And uh, there's a single and uh, Harmi, you're in the way of the screen. There's a single and um, Zach Crawley is off the mark. The end of that lively first over from Mohamed Siraj. So England have reduced it by a single. Crawley's away. It means he retains the strike. Well, he's, he's given me a picture here of a, a roast. There's a beef with a bit of cheesecake on it for dessert. Oh, it's not that one. Oh, it's... Oh, it's there. It looks like an overcraft. It's a roast. Just give me a picture of a roast. No, there you are. That's the picture you want to see of it. Look, in the Times newspaper. Ah, that's the one. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing picture, yeah. What's that in the Times? Yeah, I can show Perfect. it to you, but not now. Let's focus on the cricket before anybody gets in touch and says we're losing our marbles. Well, here's a surprise. Not. Aksha Patel is going to use the new ball knowing how Crawley and um, Sibley have struggled against spin early on. What will Crawley's attitude be, I wonder, today? Here comes Akshay Bowles and he pitches it very full and Crawley plays a beautiful looking off drive and it races to mid-off but he's up so there's no run in it. Well, this is purely because obviously the way he's dismissed these batsmen in the past, isn't it? With a straight ball that's gone straight on with a new ball. Now he's bowled one that beats Crawley's outside edge. As much because of the flight and dip, I think, as because of the turn. Yeah, it was a lovely ball. He didn't have quite as 
as low an arm as he had done uh, previous test matches where he's driving it into the pads this time more over the top with a little bit more overspin and just a bit of shape to hold on the outside edge of Crawley Crawley pulls away much to the crowd's disgust but he just wasn't quite ready it's as simple as that you're perfectly entitled to do that much of Patel bowling in sunglasses that have a yellow rim to them a tall slim man not as tall as Crawley mind you that's short and Crawley goes back and works it very nicely through square leg for uh, a single as the sliding fielder gets a cheer from the crowd who are very animated on the back of that fabulous batting from Akshay Patel and Washington Sundar this morning which abruptly came to an end once Akshay was run out well it took Ben Stokes less than an over to get rid of um, the remaining two Ishant Sharma and Mohammed Siraj so unsurprisingly an attacking field surrounds Dom Sibley a slip or two slips maybe more than just a slip in the gully and a short leg and that ball's drifting down the leg side they asked for LBW but from that line fired in towards middle and leg it had to spin a lot Coley looks around should I review he wants an opinion no he, even he suggests that it's flying down the, the leg side so he doesn't review Crawley waits patting the ground a serious looking face on a serious looking man down he comes trying to get near the pitch of the ball nothing wrong with that as a principle but because he tries to work it square on the leg side he gets a leading edge to extra cover you're gonna come down play straight you have to assume the ball might spin a bit play straight don't play against the spin not this hard new ball It's nicely played, beautiful batting, just lent on the, the bounce and spin, hit the splice, drop down safely, end of the over, two for no wicket. Yeah, Dom Sibley's trying to fight his technique, he has a little back and across movement, he tries to get across onto off stump, so that he's basically saying, well you can't do me on the outside, I'm going to back myself to hit the straighter balls. Now what he's got to be careful is he doesn't take his weight and keep pushing it towards point. He's got to somehow get his weight then back down the pitch, which, to be fair to him, the last three balls he did brilliantly. And maybe that skipping down the wicket, Goffey, just got him mm. moved, getting his wicket down towards the bowler, Axa. It, it, it is a worry for him, and he, he, he'll feel uncomfortable out there at this moment in time. And he is fighting his technique. He knows when the left arm spinner balls at him, he tends to play away from his body. So what he's trying to do is get right across his stumps. But what worries me with that technique against the left arm spinner at Patel who's got a lot of balls drifting into the right hander is LBW. Siraj bowls, dead straight ball and Crawley missed it, it would have hit his pads in front of all three but he's worked it for a single just wide of mid on. Nice, uh, he looks sort of purposeful does that Crawley? And I don't mean reckless just purposeful like he's up for the business to hand. He always is, isn't he? He's such a positive, he moves positive. For a big man, he moves into the ball generally really, really well. He's an impressive young player, I think, Zach Crawley. I really do yeah. think he's, uh, he's got all the credentials. Impressive young guy, too. Um, valued in the team and, and uh, with sensible thoughts about things and works hard to get better in his game, too, which is always a good thing. And defended from the crease by Dom Sibley, who has that difficult move. The the bat waves around a bit and there's a lot to do to get it dropping back on line anyway he does that and he keeps out a length ball from Mohamed Siraj it's good isn't it when you're in here and you can uh, the guy that's got 300 test wickets can be said listen we're going to go with a younger seamer and we're going to open with a, a spinner that's what a good place they're in India when they can say to can say to Aishan Sharma just take a blow for a moment we're going to go with the younger Mohamed Siraj got a bit more energy got a bit more pace yeah, he certainly got a bit of extra pace nice shot uh, Sibley they look good this, this pair I, I, but I'm not going to say anything because of commentator's curse so he's worked that ball off pretty straight hasn't done much and he's worked it to mid wicket but the key thing was we saw a lot of the face of his bat one thing I'd was quite interested we just saw a shot from side on obviously we have limited views with the TV cameras views but the slips are well staggered so first slip is behind the keeper then the second slips in front of the keeper and the third slips a long way in front of the keeper they're, they're really trying to 
spread their wings and, and also make sure that the ball carries. Siraj bowls a half volley at leg stump. Crawley, oh, well fielded. Crawley whipped it away and got a lot of it. There was excellent fielding down at long leg, squarish long leg. And guess who? The man of the day thus far, Washington Sundar, does the work down there and gets applause from everybody. He certainly wasn't moving like a man that had just batted for the best part of five hours, was he? Or maybe he was moving like a man who was so loose, so lithe, so ready, fit, young. Only batted for, what, an hour and a half this morning. He'd just, just done his warm-up bats. It is for the youngsters today. Wow, the, the work ethic is... Well, it has to be. It's the, the game is changing, isn't it? It's for the better. A few more people in today. Not as many as for the day-night test, the last one. But here's Siraj again. Yeah. And that's nice batting from Crawley, really. He stands right at the top of the ball's bounce and works it away with his wrist through square leg and he gets a couple for it this is a I don't, I don't want to keep saying it but this really is a good start in terms of attitude as much as anything else yeah we talk about intent a lot don't we and I, I think Crawley always shows intent with his movements and I think that's why he has potential to be such a very very fine player for a very long period of time but the both of these two together Sibley running down the wicket second ball trying to show an intent, trying to get good movement pattern, which uh, is definitely going to be key to one surviving, but two scoring. What Crawley's good at, uh, Mark, is but he's good off the front foot and good off the back foot. So he's, he can score from any kind of delivery. Um, Dom Sibley is a little bit more looking to score when the ball's coming towards him, a ball, when you ball at the stumps and play through mid-wicket. But Zach Crawley can play all around the wicket. Fantastic play. They're ready to go. Crawley's on five. Reorganise the field here. And now he bowls a half volley that Crawley thumps back at him. And it's a brilliant bit of fielding off his own bowling. And then he lies on the ground because he, I think he probably hurt his wrist or arm or something. Either because of the ball hitting it or because of the way that he fell. But he's uncomfortable as Siraj. He's got an enormous amount, well, he's got that tuber grip around his, his right, the whole of his right arm and around his left arm. That's usually for fielders who dive a lot and they don't want to graze themselves, but I think he might have hurt his wrist in stopping that powerful, beautiful drive from Zach Crawley that on most days would win him a boundary. It looks like they're all just going to walk off the field and come out in sympathy. <laughs> the physio's on, he's in a lot of pain, he's hurt his hand, but it is the lunch break. That's why they're leaving the field, and it's a pity for Crawley that that didn't go for four. It certainly deserved to. It was a most elegant shot. So England unharmed in that period. A little burst before the lunch break on the third day, having given up a lead of 160 to India. That's just so important. They start well. If they start well, they'll spread confidence and belief in the dressing room. So six for no wicket at lunch, a deficit still of 154. Uh, the physio is really focused on Siraj, like it, it might be more than just a, a knock and therefore a bruise, but my suspicion is it isn't. All the applause goes to Washington Sundar, who leads the Indian team up the stairs, getting applause from the crowd and from his teammates. So a little bit of drama as we go into the lunch break after a morning that uh, belonged to India. Um, so much of yesterday offered so much to England until it was taken away by Rishabh Pant and Washington Sundar and Sundar continued that work right through to the end of the innings unbeaten with 96 can you believe that four away from the first test match 100 with both Ishan Sharma and Mohamed Shiraz falling for no score to Stokes after Akshay Patel was run out superb bit of fielding by Johnny Bairstow to affect that run out Aksha himself made 43 and the two of them looked in complete control while they were out there, Gareth. Yeah, and they were, they were really, really piling on the, the sort of already mounting fatigue that England had had uh, for the three sessions they'd already been in the field and they played beautifully and it, it took, like you say, that, that splendid bit of work from, from Johnny Besto to, to break the partnership and then it all finished very quickly uh, with Ben Stokes finishing off with those two wickets. But uh, yeah, England... The signs were good. There didn't seem to be any fatigue in movement from the two opening batsmen. 
like you say, we don't want to jinx it, but uh, they went in there with positive movement and positive intent. And, uh, you know, the, the, the finishing part of that, you just hope that Shiraz hasn't hurt uh, his, his hand too much and you hope he's, from the game point of view, he's, he's good to come out there. But uh, six for none, it's positive so far for England.